is up to gaming a tale as old as time and one of the greatest esports rivalries to grace our screens. Snakebite with an early camo grab here up again, so let's go Optic Chat in the building already. Yeah, no surprise to hear the Optic fans getting loud. They will be pushing their team to success, pushing them to glory if they can. But Snakebite has just snuck through here with this camo, doesn't take damage and escapes. Really good veteran play with that camo coming in from Snakebite. They're also able to take down two. If they can take down Formula as well, this be a free gold hold. Will do exactly that. Shock rifle's gonna be turned over as well. The oddball will be passed off. So a strong step up here for FaZe Clan off of the rip, controlling the pipes and the power weapon as well. You talk about veteran plays coming in your grand finals. How about Snake Bite? Look at that. Cool, calm, and composed with the camo. He single-handedly dismantles gold, grabs the ball, and grabs shock as well. That will lead to your first narrow face clan lead at 10 to 7. And you always feel in these first game, it's a little bit nervy, right? It's a little bit. Oh, you're going to hit the headshot. Sometimes we see a few extra body shots not quite connecting with the head until those nerves just start to settle. Speaking of selling, though, it's FaZe Clan who have done it best at the start of this game. 17 points and rising and still holding this pipe's control. Trying to get eventually taken down as well. Trying to get crafty with the angle. Snake by this left is your last player alive for FaZe. It's a 1v1 versus Formal at the moment. Formal trying to decide if he wants to move near that odd ball or maybe he's just trying to influence Spawn to get his teammates around him. Which is exactly what he looks like he might have done. There are those elevator spawns, and there is Formal running that off ball back to his teammates. Gonna grapple it past the line of sight of FaZe coming off that respawn. That is such a heads up play coming in from Formal. Very elegantly done by playing the ball like that. He just tricks anyone thinking he might be trailing it. Instead, grapples right back in for fast movement. Here's a two man push though. Oh, it's shut down by Formal. Third player will fall. Camo popping as well. And with those two kills coming in from Formal, Trippy will get away with that camouflage and Optic have a full setup and go into a lead as well. Wow, what a lead change there and what timing. Perfect timing on the kills as you saw. Formal is the one that made the immediate push from Pipes. He wasted no time. I think FaZe Clan thought they had more time, but because of Formal's grapple, they get into Whirlpool right away. Now they have rotated to Hydro as well and they lead by 15. Trippy's still got a little bit of camo to work with as well. Just some good damage, but can't quite convert onto a kill. But FaZe are going to be worried because they know they don't have that camo. They know that Trippy is about. And with that kill, the ball does get reset anyway. So Optic throw that one off the map. Get that play ball. FaZe straight on top of it though. And now Trippy with his camo run out is going to work with APG to push this ball. This is a big three-man push here. Let's see if they can break. They've got one kill. They've got the opening break they need. They're going to try to break the gold setup here. You can see the play ball isn't going to be made as well. But the trade is going to come in. So. 3v3 on the map right now. There's a little 1v1 going down in and around that off ball, but Lucid is watching over that off ball like a hawk at the moment. As he now moves in on Frosty. Great pre nade there. Lucid just reading the play perfectly as he pre nades bottom tower. He's also going to grab these plasmas. Lucid was a spawner off of that sequence. Eventually, the ball will be rotated just a bit towards long haul here, and only six points separating the two. Lucid should be able to clean up this damage as well onto Snake Fight. In fact, the team works so good that he doesn't even have to do that. FaZe find themselves two dead at the moment, make it three dead. Little repoke from Frosty is going to cost him there. And oh, I tell you what, there's four more helping out Lucid, staying alive once more. Royal 2 will fall too, and FaZe are getting picked apart here by Optic. Three dead yet again, an unbelievable composure and timing pushes here coming in from Enemy Optic Gaming right now, out slaying and also outscoring and now heavily in your round number one, it's 59 to 29. Full setup here at Blue as well. Lucid with the commando in his hands. 
Should be able to get a guaranteed trade of anyone pushing in if you can avoid those grenades. However, Snakebite's making it difficult. And Renegade's made it even more unpredictable about what's going to happen in the next few moments. Renegade gets two, but Lucy will cut one down out of the air. The ball does get played by Optic, though. Oh, no, it doesn't. It stays on the map. And FaZe may have a chance of stealing away a setup, unless APG can get this ball off the map, and that is exactly what he does. Leave it to APG, the objective master, and master of many trades here, because he's eventually going to find three dead for Optic Gaming. The ball is played, but it's an immediate grab from FaZe Clan. They were ready for that play ball. Yeah, need to be efficient here, FaZe. It's one thing that maybe has been... We've been a little bit critical of sometimes in the objective game ties for them. A little bit overslaying going on, not prioritizing that objective when there is an opportunity to do so, but no opportunity to make those mistakes in a grand final. 68 points on the board at the moment for Optic, but FaZe are starting to get close. What can FaZe do here? They've been battered a bit early on in this game, outslayed and also outscored. Now only down by 20, and as you say, still certainly anyone's first round. This is such a smart route, by the way, from Frosty. He wins the fight against Formal as well. But the way he allowed the player from the catwalk into Elevator, saw the kills go down, means he can rewrap through Midridge and completely catch his Formal off guard. It's perfect movement from him. Lucy will finally end this little spree, but with that and the little run that he went on, FaZe are pretty close and might just go into a lead here. Yeah, they do. What a great hold there. And even though you saw Lucid win the battle of Back Hydro, it was a lot of time on the board that comes in for FaZe, but Optic Gaming does answer back. They get three dead. Frosty's your last player alive on stacks. And it's APG who's doing the damage at the moment. Odd pull back in the hands of Optic Gaming. And there was a little example I was talking about, right? The Shock Rifle not quite hitting the head in this game, number one. Maybe a little bit later in the series, heads get popped. But for now, it's the battle for camo that's going to be taking place in around 20 seconds. Trippy's gonna get flanked here. Can he escape with that grapple? Just about manages to do so. First picture traded out. Three dead for Optic Gaming. This was a push that FaZe needed to win. Right now they're in a 2v1, and with 90 points on the board, they need to win this push. Renegade has to fly in. Renegade gets cut down, though, but the trade does come in. Where is the rest of FaZe? Can they get near that oddball? Lucid's just trying to bait it out at the moment. You can see he's aware of the positioning here. As the camo is coming up as well, 1v1 with Snake Bite. Renegade joins the party at just the wrong time. If you're an Optic fan, an Optic find themselves three dead. Camo should be stolen away here by Snake Bite, but I'm not sure if you picked that up. APG still alive and still causing problems. APG with good damage there. Formal camo it. should be grabbed by Optic here, and Formal can stay alive. It's huge. Maybe a little mistake there from Snake Bite. Didn't quite slide out and pick that up. Snake Bite will finally go down as well, and this is an opportunity now. Look how tight this game is. In the last few moments, three dead, three dead here, Renegade last alive! Formal! Who else but Formal comes in and grabs that ball to win the round here for Optic Gaming? It's a clean wipe there, that'll be it, two seconds to go. Late game composure is going to be something we talk about so many times throughout this series. And no one has been in that position more than Matthew Pipe or Formal, clutching up in those final moments, but looking back on it, APG is last player alive. FaZe have misplayed that. They could have maybe done a little bit better and converted that round into one of their own. Optic Gaming somehow maintains presence there on gold as well as glass in the end. Just long enough while that camo was popping. And as you said, formal stealing that camo is a big deal. It's not a surprise that that's what wins the game for them. But we're going to move in. Is he going to get the burn or is he going to stay alive? But now he's being a nuisance. Renegade starts to connect with that shock right. But Trippy last alive here for Optic. He'll make the numbers a little bit more favorable as he takes down one. Face trying to move on that odd ball, trying to be efficient and get it back towards Pipe, but at the moment, Trippy's just been a nuisance and Formal's joining him as well. Optic Gaming gonna be very happy they took that first round in the end. Phase though with quite a comeback. Let's not forget Optic Gaming was leading by quite a margin for the majority of that round. Phase almost gets right back in and then the 80-point mark. Good shots here from Trippy. A double kill on the board. Three dead for FaZe. Yeah, beautiful shots coming in from Trippy. Enemy has the ball. And he's oh, earned his oh. nickname this season, right? Big game trip, but thanks, Mike. He's stuck through here, he has to be dealt with, and there is Trippy to win yet another individual battle. First points on the board here, took a little bit of extra time. One minute of play total here in the game for any points to go on the board, but now with one dead each side. Let's get to a listen in with Optic Gaming. Glass, you guys you guys Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, Two dead, guys, two dead. I'm here, Two dead, another guy, I'm trying to go for a wall. Yeah, bottom tower, one shot. Three dead if we kill him. Three. Last one, last one. Long, long, big run, big run. How you got me? Ball's down, ball's down. He's so long, so long. He's glass. He's in there. That's okay. He's in Seeky, I think. We can grab a ball here. We're getting ball, guys. Could be one of them. Could be one of them. Nothing long, guys. Nothing long. Camo's in 20. Camo 20. Glass now, glass now. 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 Glass
Need to bring it to the Yep, just slip around. Yeah, two guys top top hat. Yeah, back up. I'm absolutely something. They are bottom center. Yeah, two guys top hat. Two guys top hat. They're both top hat. Turn around, turn around, Joey. Turn around. Absolutely go door. Absolutely go door. One wish shot tower. Absolutely turn door. Absolutely. Rotate, rotate. Yeah, camo. 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 Only way they can kill balls is if they go bottom mid. Okay. Yo, flash, flash. I know. They see me with camo. They see me with camo. We clash. They go bottom tower. Top tower. Top tower. Top tower. Top tower. Top tower. Top tower. I dive from bottom tower. Yeah, I'm silo. He's silo right now. Okay, silo right now. Good job. He's silo. Hitting it. Hitting it on stickies. Pushing your right side. Your right side. Your right side. He's near you. He's right on top of you. One shot back silo. One shot back silo. I'm here. Where's he going? Where's he going? Okay. Go for me. Let's go first. Let's go first. Got one. Got one. Two dead. Two dead. Okay. Two dead. Two dead. Two dead. Two dead. Two dead. Two dead. Still two dead. Two v two now. Two v two right now. No guy on me also. You guys can maybe just get a gold. Just get a gold. Careful, careful. Push you. Guys, don't mind this. Make it up. Make it up. Make it up. Make it up. Roll two. The last two probably elevator. Either. I have one, guys. I have one. Yep. Last two elevator for sure. Communication warp tick is pretty much perfect. You heard Lucid giving all of the information, even in the one v ones, just to give. A possible advantage to a teammate to win that battle. Optic Gaming are winning the battle though. 52 points and rising. Already got that first round on the board. The double pipe push is going to come in here. Formal's ready oh. for it! Gets one and some chain damage as well. Yeah, almost on a chain reaction. Gets both. Trippy is your last player alive though for Optic. He needs to be careful if he all ends here. He's going to play this slow, unsurprisingly. Frosty going to know where he is though. He's got help from Renegade too. Renegade oh. going to fly in. Goodness. Now he's starting to connect. APG gets beat down, but wins the trade. But Formal now left on his own. So at the end of that team fight, you can see FaZe kind of come out on top there. The spawns near them as well. And Frosty's just trying to see where he spawns are coming in, where he moves that opal. Royal 2 gets one, but Trippy takes him down. And now Frosty looks a little bit lost as to where to go with that opal. Decides to just throw it out back onto those batteries and fight. For it once more. Yeah, he wasn't sure if World 2 was going to stay alive in Whirlpool, so he just kind of wraps around the batteries as you say to play the ball. However, Optic Gaming was wise to it, but he bought enough time. But here's a big moment in the game Optic Gaming's lead has been cut in half. APG with the camo with two teammates dead. What play does he make here to attack the ball? Optic have commanded this camo most of the time. We need to talk about that camo play, by the way, a few seconds ago that Lucid made. APG's got to be careful here. Gets hit by that nade. But Lucid wins his 1v1, and now APG has freedom. Optic Gaming have freedom. Two kills go in their favor. Royal 2 taken down as well, and now the last player alive is Snakebite. Nowhere near the Optic Gaming setup. They have the up ball, and they will extend their lead. It's a perfectly clean wipe from Optic Gaming. They have looked perfect so far. Snakebite wins a double melee battle, though, and will stay alive and back elevator. However, Optic Gaming not really interested in whatever's happening at elevator. Instead, they will rotate the pipes. Ooh, Frosty and Renegade, the Frenegade duo, combining here to push pipes, and this might be a really defining moment in this game. Trippy gets one, but Frosty gets two. APG, the only player alive here is in long haul on Sneaky. This should be an opportunity for a ball grab for FaZe. But right now they're thinking about the kill first. They do get the trade to make sure that they have comfortable opportunity to grab the ball. However, it's a very effective play ball from Optic Gaming. Take a look. FaZe can't grab it at all. They're going to need another round of slays here. The effectiveness of that play Oi! cannot be understated. No trade there for Frosty. Formal comes out standing tallest and he'll get a shock rifle for it as well. Renegade might find that out as well. Oh, that's the beat down himself though. So a little bit of a janky battle. Oh boy. Renegade wins it, but Lucy cleans him up. As the last player alive, it's a little bit of a misplay coming in from Optic Gaming, right? Renegade's weak on the bat ledge. Should have been an easy cleanup. Instead, he takes down Formal with the shock. Look at APG though. He got out of there, got that opal, gets the play. He's doing it all at the moment and now he wins another battle. APG 23 and 18 with 48 seconds of time in this game. He's having a fantastic game number one. Feels like every time we're on APG's POV this season, he looks better and better. APG is speaking of. Overkill, by the way. Yeah. Frosty just got an overkill. Overkill. Out of nowhere, Frosty gets an overkill and just as you thought the Optic Gaming through full control. Frosty takes over. Camo popping as well. At a time when they needed it most. This is a big battle as well. Oh. Wins it against APG. Frosty now heating up. And they keep Optic Gaming. Three dead, four dead. Now, Trippy was your last spawner. And due to the timing of the kill, it will keep Optic on staggered spawns. And take a look at the scoreboard. FaZe Clan is right back in it. And if that doesn't sum up what this final is going to be about, I don't know what will. It's going to take something special every time to turn the tides of one of these games. 
Frosty trying to stay alive. Trippy helps cross map. Royal 2 still with that ball in his hand, though. And FaZe about to go into a lead. They overtake Optic Gaming score. And Optic are still too dead. Off the back of the Frosty overkill, FaZe Clan now leads in your round number two. It was perfectly timed, and it had to happen when it did. Just like that, 85 to 73 in favor of FaZe Clan. Formal should win this fight, it does, but... Royal 2 still has that ball in his hands. The playboy is going to come in. Formal gets two. He re-challenges and now Frosty is last alive. So even though there's only 48 seconds left in this game, there's plenty of time for Optic with the setup they've just managed to get. So not only win the round here, Andy, but maybe win this game. The ball did not play. And how fitting that it's Trippy that grabs the ball from the Trippy spot. The ball did not get played successfully by FaZe to bottom middle. It was an easy grab for Optic. And just like that, here at the 88 point mark, they're only separated by two. Frosty got one. Royal 2 is trying to bait them out of pipes. All of Optic just bunched up at the moment. There's playing tight and there's playing too tight. Renegade comes in. Royal 2 comes in. The ball gets played. Lucid last alive. Can Renegade survive and keep that ball in his hand? Snakebite trying to take down Lucid. The final kill. Optic are three dead. And FaZe with the last second push will get their round on the board. As you said, if this game is any indication, we are set up for a toe-to-toe, head-to-head -to -head battle. The two teams on your main stage will exchange rounds in game number one so far, meaning we will head to a sudden death round number three in Recharge Oddball. The winner of this round will take the game. The man who started the comeback is on your screen right now. It's going to be FaZe's Frosty. The overkill that sparked them into life. Snake Bite going to be going for that camo. It might be a burn situation, but no, he gets away. No, he doesn't. And Tricky might actually pick up the camo there. I'm not sure that Snakebite would have had enough time to pop it, but here's Renegade with the shock rifle taking down Trippy, so not sure where that camo's gone. If anyone's had it, it's been burnt, whatever the situation is. Oh. Renegade has decided it's time to stop missing and start hitting some heads. Feels like Renegade just sending some shocks across the system. We're seeing moments of greatness from him, but it feels like there's a lot more gas in the tank, and we're only just getting started here. All eight players alive on the map. It will be a phase grab back to Elevator. They will hold here. Let's see if Optic can break. Enemy has the ball. Optic having to force their way through the pipes. And with a shark rifle in the hands of Renegade, it's going to be a tough push to make. They need to use that cover of the little wave that's in the center of Whirlpool, and they can't do it. Two fall, formal, heel fall as well. It's a double kill for Renegade. Lucid last alive, and I tell you what, he's going to fall too. It's three in a row. APG challenges. Enemy has the ball. I mean, two overkills in one game would be a little bit greedy, right? Inches away from the overkill there. Uh, by the way, on different rotations of spawners, almost pulls off the overkill. It will lead to 14 points on the board here. But the formal answer's back, and here comes the optic pressure as FaZe find themselves three dead. And if I'm honest, Mark, off of the plays that we saw and the sequences we just saw, I think optic fans are wishing they had more than 14, excuse me, FaZe fans are wishing they had more than 14 points on the board. Yeah, I would completely agree with you. They just ran over optic a couple of times there, but like you say, it doesn't translate into ball time. However, killing all of optic might well do that. FaZe push again, Lucid last alive. We just saw him in a battle. He'll fall as well, APG, fresh off of the spawn, maybe thinking about can I stop this camo pickup? But the Oppo back in the hands of FaZe now, and APG, you have to say, off of the spawn has done a great job to at least contest that camouflage. The camo is definitely going to determine where the game goes in the midpoint here. The next score run should be determined by this camo grab. World 2 waiting for Lucid. Uh oh, might even get two. Good damage from him. APG should have a camo grab here. He does. APG with the camo, but the rest of his teammates, you saw Trippy was no shields, and Lucid and Formal are taking a quick nap in the respawn screen, so he's going to have to play this one slowly, play this one carefully. 41 points and rising here for FaZe. It's been all them so far in this third round. And you know, right now, perfectly done. Optic Gaming, I was just going to say, would be looking for their first pick. And that's exactly what APG is sure oh. to do. Eventually does not get the melee, so they're three dead. And even though they get the first pick, Lucid is your last player alive on Sneaky. He'll be double teamed. It's a perfect 2v1 coming out of phase. They will continue to score here at 43 to 12. He goes down as well, and Optic is starting to get picked off one by one here. Renegade going to grab that old ball and just waiting for a little bit of information of where to rotate from his teammates. This could be a little bit of an obnoxious spot to actually hold it in as well. 50 points on the board here for FaZe Clan. Halfway. So not just winning the round, but winning game number one. Take a look how Renegade does not immediately go to blue there. Instead, he just uses a transitional hold on the double stack. Because just as you say, he didn't want to bring him back blue and get caught off by Optic Gaming stopping the play ball. Instead, the ball will still be held bottom middle. It was too dead for FaZe, meaning Formal and company now, with the shock in hand, should be able to hold here and maybe mount a comeback. Formal, by the way, has got 20 assists in this game. 
Absolutely ridiculous numbers from him, doing so much damage, but it's gonna have to be headshots with his shock rifle. As APG has that ball in his hand once again. Royal oh. 2 finds out the formal's feeling a little bit fruity here. There's another oh. headshot! It's two for formal! As APG keeps his hands on that oddball. And just like that, like FaZe Clan before them, Optic Gaming now has cut the lead in half for FaZe. Just like that, it's a 10 point game. Renegade trying to force on that oddball, but the damage from Trippy on the cross is going to allow APG to get the kill. Trippy now hunting down more. It's just nine points all of a sudden behind between the two teams. Royal 2 will get two though. Trippy is last alive. He'll try and scrape a little bit of extra ball time, maybe to tie this game up. But eventually, the play ball will come in. And with Optic 2 dead, it's now a fight for the pipes. Fight in the pipes, let's see how this plays out. There are two dead, Formal needed to win that. As a result, there will be three dead for Optic Gaming. We do see one trade coming in for Lucid, which is big. He'll stay alive at top goal for the moment. He's not going to be able to outshoot Royal 2 when he's got half shields, though. Royal 2 comes through and cleans up that damage. Face with the ball back in their hands. And a little bit more of a comfortable lead in their control as well. There's one kill here for Royal 2. No beatdown going to come in as well. So he survives, he can reach challenge. Two dead for Optic again, and Royal 2 is on the hunt for Trippy. By the way, worth mentioning here, was, as we do see FaZe hit the 60 point mark, Optic was being outslayed by over 8 kills earlier on. They've brought this game way back in the slaying category and in the points category. They only trail by 12 now. 2v2 on the map. Saint Knight does have that shock rifle. APG trying to take the 1v1. He misses the shot though. And now Formal comes in and makes him play. Optic might have an opportunity here. See how APG plays this. Knows it was a 2v2 on the map. Needs to wait for his spawning teammates to play this correctly. Ball has been picked up. Plays all on the map. But Royal 2 gets cut down. It's the first kill going to Optic Gaming. Two, now four. Lucid falls in the meantime though, and APG has to survive. Optic Gaming go into a lead here. 65 points and rising on the board. And what a comeback it is for them. Still being outslayed in this game overall. However, now leading by six points and so much riding on this game number one it will set the momentum for the entire series snake bite about to get double team but he's got some help renegade gets one snake bite stays alive and with that face stay alive as well they'll grab the ball they'll try and turn this corner and the support is there but no pick up on that off oh, and formal will get one formal breaks and it gets two frosty now has to make a play with this camo Lucid was trying to eagle out the camel. Lucid was standing still on Midbridge. He pays the price. Frosty plays it perfectly now. Here comes Frosty in a 1v2 against the oddball. He knows he's got to kill this ball carrier or at least do damage and stay alive. But now he's getting zoned out. The double challenge comes in from Optic. Formal and APG trapped in this corner. Trippy's going to grab that ball though. And there might be an escape route for him here to blue. It's a great rotate. Snakebite was pressuring top gold, but it doesn't matter. Optic does not want anything to do with top gold either. Snakebite rotating here. And now one minute left on the clock. Optic Gaming leads by 20 in a huge comeback. You have to say this might be the last push for FaZe. Frosty gets one with that shock rifle and they force to play ball. So Optic find themselves four dead. Look at the timing. And Frosty still has that shock, and he is looking for re-owners! There's some game knowledge for you. But that was three dead at a terrible time for Optic Gaming. FaZe gets the ball right away, and Frosty gets your first spawner here. FaZe trails by 20, but they still have slang and map control. All eight players alive on the map. FaZe Clan needs to hold, Optic needs to push. Optic taking their time, though, to make sure they get back onto the map. Formal. It's about as close as you can get to a headshot, I think. But Optic have broken. APG, look at him again, shoulder peeking. Lucid comes around the corner. Frosty can't connect, he gets one. Can he turn the second onto Lucid? It's a killing spree. But are the kills timed well enough for FaZe to get involved with this fight? Frosty is your anchor player. Look at all the other players on FaZe. They're, they're running are, that ball away. They're pushing across here. They're trying to make the move. But Frosty has a lot of responsibility. They do get the first pick though. They need to force the play ball here. Look at 95 on the board. Lucid's gonna try and win the game right here, right now. 97 isn't enough to win you a game. But are they going to be on the respawn here, FaZe? Can they get close enough to that off ball? Renegade is on the pipes, he's got the grapple! And he's got that ball as well! An absolutely huge grapple. This will now be a gold hold for FaZe. A huge play for Renegade. However, the first pick does go to Optic Gaming. Two dead for FaZe. Luce has got the camo and Frosty is trying to escape. The clutches of Formal. The clutches of Lucid. He won't be able to do it and Optic Gaming will break and win game number one. In that game number one, there were several times where they were slaying by eight to 10 kills, out slaying, excuse me, by eight to 10 kills, and they let Optic Gaming bring the game back, not just with a few kills, but several Slayer rotations.
making sure you don't find yourselves four dead in back-to-back -back scenarios could be the key to success for FaZe Clan here. Off to gaming, they lead one to zero as we head into Solitude Slayer. Slayer has been the secret to success so far in this tournament for Optic Gaming. Usually we're always talking about FaZe in those game fives. Well, we're going to have to find out if Optic can keep that going as we head into game number two here. Solitude Slayer, they've been superb at so far this season since the new map was introduced. And that battle for the sniper rifle is going down already. Former with the first pick, taking down Renegade. And as we said, that game number one was already a treat and potentially a way to set the table for an unbelievable world championship grand finals here. APG trying to make something happen on truck. Frosty gonna have that sniper rifle though, and I'm pretty sure that we might have a little bit of an observer bug, but no, we're back into the game. All good, everyone. And it will be the sniper going down. It's three dead for FaZe, and this is what they didn't want, right? They've given up the snipe side, they've given up the snipe, and it's APG. Maybe not top of the list for Optic on who you want it. That sniper rifle in the hands off, but showing he can put it to work as well. Yeah, what a stretch there. You saw three kills get registered immediately. It was four dead for FaZe, and APG also connecting, as you say, with the sniper rifle to now give up the gaming a seven to three lead early on. And as we mentioned the last time we saw these two teams play it, it was earlier this weekend. Very good shot from Trippy up against Renegade. Eventually he'll be cleaned out. But the last time we saw these two teams play it, it was Optic beating FaZe 50-47 on this game type and came down to the wire. I was gonna say, this is an interesting game plan from Optic at the start of this game. They tried to get really aggressive there onto the FaZe Clan spawners and actually lost that team fight. So FaZe holds strong. And now it's just a one kill game. The sniper rifle does look like it's been used up. There's no more ammo to play with for anyone at the moment. And look at this, FaZe are just flying at them. APG's last alive again, and he's gonna fall as well. FaZe up by one, but Optic's still too dead. Too dead there eventually. Let's not forget, this game was just seven to three. That's an unbelievable swing and an unbelievable comeback from FaZe Clan. Let's get into a listen in with FaZe. Too late, too late. Hey John, I'm gonna go to them. Nothing, Matt, nothing, oh, nothing, nothing. Watch our posters, watch our posters. There's three, there's three, there's three. I can't see him, I can't see him. They played for me too. They played for me too. Quantum's up now, guys. Quantum's up now. Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. 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 Nice shot, John. Play for map. Play for map control here. I want to play for blue. I want to play for blue. Yeah, get to blue. Everyone get to blue. Everyone get to blue. I'm saying this. Your fault of posters push out. What's up? I hear you. I repulse. Can I get to blue? Yeah, you can. You can. I'll put all that. Love that. You snipe in 30. You snipe in 30. Yo, remember the push. Remember the push. Yeah. Snipe in 30, guys. Snipe in 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get get repulse in chat. You're probably going to play for new thrust. They're going to wait for thrust to do anything. Oh, LR, LR. Stop for a bit. But they like to ice. Can we double walk yard? Can we double walk yard? One loop, one glass. One loop, one glass. On the corner, on the corner. On the corner, weak. I can't hit. Lose the one in. Yeah, I'm going to push up on this too. Be careful. Nothing driving. Nothing driving. Yeah, 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 two, 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 two. Yeah, we're kind of senior. Right, 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 right. I'll see you turn. I'll see you turn. A lot of us are weak. 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 A lot you want to re-hit? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Map, no stages open, okay? I'm just oh, driveway, driveway, driveway. They're gonna go top gold and LR then. Yeah. Nice, Sean. Nice, Sean. Keep, keep, yeah, keep playing for that. Keep playing for that. Watch out, yard. Watch out, yard. Watch out, yeah. yard. What side? No, don't hey, push, don't push. Don't push. Well, the secret to success we're seeing in front of our eyes right now. Optic cannot get that sniper rifle, and Renegade, well, he's making use of this weapon in his hands. You have to wonder, as Trippy gets bodied as well, if Optic might be even a bit more disciplined in the peaks that they allow there as Renegade already has caught one. And once again, it needs to be said after the listening as well, how about the swing? Do not forget, FaZe was trailing seven to three at the open, and now up by three at 17 to 14. It's been a fantastic hold from FaZe. Renegade just looking for an opportunity to pull the trigger at the moment, but Optic not giving him one. Former will poke. Gets away with his life this time. And his head's still attached to his shoulders. FaZe now taking control of blue and something we Heard from the comms, Andy, as they're trying to take control of Blue, trying to force and pinch them back into Yard, trying to force them out of that LR side where Renegade is waiting with that snipe. Look at Trippy right now. Trippy's about to make the move here in Cafe Window. This is a big push from Optic Gaming coming up. APG's there as well. Snakebite is there, pushes APG back, and it looks like nobody goes down in that battle. Everyone knows shields, but nobody falling. 
Wow, how rare is that? All eight players pushing. Eventually, the first pick, though, goes to Fade. This formal falls on S2. See, there's a QT down as well. I don't know if it's a phase one or if it is for Optic Gaming, but Trippy will at least slow things down for a second. Trippy with that kill on Frosty now has to escape with his life. Formal gets another as well, and it's a two-kill game as Optic pick up back-to-back. -back. Optic with very good patience and discipline there. A very nice 2v1. Somehow they keep Formal alive bottom middle. That will bring the game within one. Great teamwork there, and Baton is switching. So Lucid flying, he's got that thrust away, but even with the teamwork, it's FaZe who come out with a few extra kills themselves. 20 to 18, still just two kills between the two teams. Another thing to keep an eye on across all game types is just how tight Optic Gaming is playing in each and every game type. You can tell that in the six weeks since HCS Fort Worth, they are playing even tighter as teams of two. Take a look at that bottom middle push, for example. That's a high risk, high reward play to push two players and wrap them around bottom middle when Formal has no shields. But they do it perfectly. Lucid comes with them and they keep Formal alive through it. Watch Optic Gaming playing in really nice packs of two and making sure their pushes are perfectly timed. Game plan here from Optic. They are playing for the sniper rifle. You can see they're timing their push around when that weapon comes up. But Frosty's gonna get two. Lucid, he's left on his own. It's four dead for Optic. They made the play to try and steal that sniper rifle. Not gonna happen. Phase wise to it, and they will have that weapon right now. Not gonna lie, when you saw Lucid's POV, they're just sitting in the notch in between posters and snipe, and you saw two players actually on the posters ramp. It's a little bit risky, and once again, that was an all-in attempt to grab the sniper rifle, and Optic Gaming pays the price in a huge way. It leads to a seven-kill lead for FaZe, and a player oh. like Frosty with the sniper rifle on a killing spree. Frosty has been so impressive today. Narrowly misses the shot onto Formal, switches to the BR to try and do a little bit of damage for a teammate to clear up, but now it's about keeping the sniper rifle in the hands of FaZe. Rotates away, Royal 2 gets another, APG. Challenging from the truck. Frosty once again just firing out a couple of warning shots here, but it doesn't take him many before he starts sounding the alarms. You may have wondered just what a loss like that in game number one would have done to FaZe in terms of being so close to taking that first game in your third round, and it looks like in terms of mental fortitude and resilience, with an eight kill lead, they have bounced back in a big way. Now up by seven. They'll find themselves three dead though. Frosty's your last player alive here on loop. He will have spawners to help the push. Yeah, really interesting actually from FaZe here. And Frosty's gonna come under pressure. Can't connect with one. Does connect with one body. Can he survive though? I wanna take a second to talk about that as Optic make their push as well and try and get back into this game because it felt like Frosty was the anchor. He was going to watch all of the snipe side and try and protect his teammates as they made a three-man push into blue. The problem was, no one from Optic showed, and it became a 3v4 that Optic won. And now Frosty was under pressure. Optic can push, and it's a five-kill game. It really was a fantastic counter there from Optic Gaming, and they also flooded to perfectly not just kill Rene Frosty, excuse me, but also kill Renegade the spawner. That brings the game within five. What was an eight-kill lead has been reduced here to a 30 to 25 lead for phase plan and Optic Gaming chipping their way back into this. It's a team fight away. Four minutes left on the game clock. Formal knows that maybe it's time to make some moves, but Frosty gonna cut him down. And it's another kill to the tally of phase plan. Lucy gets one, Renegade should trade this out and manages to do so as we go back on board with Frosty here who might have the timing on this flank. He's gonna find one here. He's got another in front of him in APG. He picks up the thrust, but it's not good enough. Double kill here for Frosty, and every kill he picks up, FaZe move closer to tying up this series. 2v1 there. Snakebite is going to try to keep World 2 alive, unable to do so. He also tries to wrap the kill. Gets taken down as well in a big moment here for Optic Gaming. Now, the game only is a four kill difference. FaZe traps in the yard. Snipe side control is Optics. And with this QT, Lucid has so much freedom. He can run in. He can clean up damage. If he had a grenade, then maybe he'd have even more fun. It's three dead as Lucid picks up two. Optic are back into this. It's a one kill game with three minutes or so left on the clock. And now they're chasing down Frosty. Tie Good game. Tie game here. Let's get into a listening with Optic Gaming. Yeah, behind yeah, behind yeah, behind yeah. Yeah. Tommy is behind them. Yo, low window, two guys here. I type here. Behind you, behind you. Behind you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Power door, power door, roll two. Yeah, behind poster stairs, guys. Nice, guys. Nice, power door, roll two. Power door, just live. Yo, concrete, concrete, concrete. One shot. Sniper, one shot. He's going close night. Low snipe, low snipe, low snipe. Lift up, Brad. Lift up, Brad. Behind you, Brad. Behind you, Brad. He has sniper. He has sniper on the repo spawn. Stay down. They're sitting cafe. There's two. Back up this. Back up this. That's going bottom center here. Yeah, they're, they're, they're so cafe. So, so, so. I hear that. I'm watching. I'm watching lift, Joey. I'm watching lift. That sniper might get out to hotel. Yo, yeah, they're, they're, these guys are stuck in the sniper. I got sniper. I got sniper. Two guys flower door. Two guys flower door. They drop market. 
Pop, that's four. That's four. That's four. So I'm absolutely still. Yeah, stay alive, Joey. Stay alive. Yeah, I got it. We're down by two here. Thrust. Thrust. Happy weekend. Happy weekend, flowers. Happy weekend, flowers. That they have a snipe, guys. They have a snipe. They have a sniper. Try not to get back. They have a snipe. They have a snipe. Just pull shoulders here. Yeah, I don't want to just play for the spawn, bro. Be careful. They're watching. We see that sniper at all? Oh my god. Where's he? Where's he? Where's he? He's watching. 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 I got it. Watch the there. I'm gonna go one shot. Yeah, I'm going to be all in. Roll two is one shot close, right? Yeah, they're 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 watching watching up here. Yeah, they're watching up here. We got it. Well, it's Optic Gaming. Try and close in on FaZe Clan. It's only right that we go over to the FaZe side and see if their comms can close this game out. Guys, look for the middle. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Yeah, blue ramp, blue ramp. Two blue ramp. Another one, another one, another one. Another one weak, Matt. Another one weak, Matt. Yeah, there's two on me, two on me. Hotel, three, 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 three. Three hotel. I can run, I can run. Wait, stay with you. Chase him out. One chase, one chase. Can you get out, Peter? Yeah, yeah, you're, 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 you're good, you're good. Yo, new thrust is 54. 54 is base right, thrust. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting this new thrust. I'm getting this new thrust. You can literally just hold this and I'm getting, I'm getting nades, guys. Let me get nades. Am I at your solo right now? Top call, top call, top push him. Yeah, top call. I hear you. Top call, top call. He's weak, he's weak. Top call, top call. Yo, get out, man. Get out, man. Get out. Yo, middle left, guys. Top call, guys. Yo, drop him, drop him. I said, I said, I should walk forward. We should walk forward. Tramp, tramp, tramp. Two yard VR, two yard VR. I'm running, Matt. I'm running. Yeah, they're gonna kill me. They're gonna flank this. I'm gonna flank this, guys. I'm gonna flank this, guys. I'm gonna flank this. Yard VR, one in Matt. Yard VR, absolutely. All you bet. All you bet. Thrust is up now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna oh, die. Die. The late game composure is always gonna be a talking point here, Andy. And Optic look like they have it once more. 45 seconds left on the game clock, but they're up by one. How fitting with these two teams. We've seen time and time again, it's so often one kill or the game clock that separates them in the late game slayer. Now 43 to 44. Fake it two, fake it three! They turn it around and it's a one kill advantage here as Lucian is last alive for Optic, but Renegade! Somehow or other comes out of that situation with his life and FaZe turned the game on his head once more. 20 seconds left. One kill between the two teams. Optic Gaming has to push. They need the kill. They're going to look for the damage here and uh -oh. they're going to look to go. Repulse has been used. Lucid walks in. Lucid gets two. It's a one kill advantage here for Optic Gaming. Three seconds left. Make it two. Lucid secures it. And Optic Gaming once again shows that the late game belongs to them. An unbelievable ending to that game from Lucid with nine consecutive kills in the late game. Unbelievable numbers to win the game by two. Uh, we're going to send it down to Blade because I'm here and he's got a, uh, a very, very special guest. What's up, gamers? I'm here with someone you all know very well. It's Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, and we're here at the Halo World Championship in Seattle. Phil, how you doing today, man? Great day, great day to be here in Seattle. It's a little rain outside, mm -hmm. so we're inside watching some esports. How fun is that? No, it's so fun, okay? A classic Seattle day out here, but it's no other day because it's the Halo World Championship, and we got the 16 best teams all around the world here. What has the atmosphere been like in this venue, and how much fun have you been having? You know, anytime we get all the fans the community together it's just awesome not only what's going on on stage but also in the back of the hall you've got a lot of the causes that we support a lot of the teams with their booths it's just great it's great to have everybody here supporting what's going to be I think an amazing finals maybe a back-to-back -back championship like that's that's pretty special for Halo it's great to see no, it is. It's super awesome to see, okay? We may get that back-to-back -back championship. We got a lot of awesome uh, vendors here as well. And, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, we want to be able to just bring gamers together, have a great time, and that's exactly what we're doing here. But when it comes down to all the gamers out there, what do you want to tell them? Give them a message out there because, you know, Xbox has been dear to our heart for a very long time, and we love hearing from you. Yeah, you know, well, we're here in Seattle, so it's great to have a lot of our local fans. We're also on the cusp of Season 5 for Halo Infinite launching, which is great. But, you know, Halo fans have been with us for a long, long time. You know, I go all the way back to CE, just see, and then getting to these kind of events, seeing everybody here, a real positive attitude in the hall, which I love. You know, people wanting to see new things happening on stage. Seems like every year the competition brings something to the stage that I haven't seen before. It's just great to see the teams evolve, continuing to support Halo. We just want to say thank you to everybody for all you do. This is why we're here. We're here to support the fans in the community, and it's awesome. You heard it from the man himself, Phil Spencer, head of Xbox. And Phil, thank you so much for talking to me and um, having a conversation, okay? Thank you. All right, that does it with us. Lose it, not just losing it, but to go down zero to three in the series, that could be FaZe Clan's mentality completely and utterly crushed. A massive game in this series.
And no surprise, we're starting off with some Lucy POV. Here comes the push already. It's a double fresh push that comes in. We'll see if it pays off for them. So far, kills traded out. This Renegade probably going to try to get out of the fridge if he can. Well, Lucid's trapped at the moment. You can see he's trying to peek, he's trying to prod, he's trying to survive. And just about manages to do so. Fates with some early map pressure here. And you would expect maybe a flank to be coming in pretty soon, but APG with that kill gives him a little bit of an outlet here. And it needs to be said, based off of what we just saw from Lucid and what we've seen from him all weekend, FaZe needs to find a way life to shut Lucid down. As you can see on your screen, it is certainly easier said than done. Lucid's been playing some of the best Halo we've seen in about two years' time, and I'll tell you what, he never really misses, but he's on a completely different level this event. FaZe needs to prioritize him on the map. Optic 2 dead. Finally, Frosty will for him. It's the only way to take him down is to meet him head on sometimes. And now you're going to see that flag moving, and this is why FaZe are so good. They're efficient with those flag runs. So if he gets one, though, which is going to slow things down, and even though that flag has crossed the 50-yard line and halfway across the map, it's now a battle of slays. APG going to try and move in for that return. But Optic now find themselves too dead. Flag does get sent home, though. I think it's an interesting play call there from Frosty because he throws the flag bottom car and he fakes like maybe he's going to go bottom middle. Now, keep in mind, Trippy was the only player alive, but APG has spawned in time, so APG nades car one, and Frosty takes the car one route. It costs them. They can't get the kills, and the flag goes back home. Now they clear out the closet as well, and Frosty will be taken down. So for the first time, it's Optic Gaming with some numbers, and they can push up the map. Royal 2 will take down Trippy, who's the furthest forward. The flag is out, but should be pretty comfortably returned, unless Royal 2 doesn't fall. But indeed, he does. Lucid throws that flag out, and you can see that Optic aren't completely happy with the setup of players around the map and the amount of kills they have. Kills traded out again. They lose Lucid and APG. That's why Formal knows he needs to get a few more kills here. He's going to play this slow. Thinking about grabbing this flag and turning the rest of FaZe around. Running this back towards his spawners, and this is such an intelligent play from Formal. Now he knows FaZe are going to be hunting him down. That's going to allow his teammates back on the map. And it's it's not just back on the map here, Andy. It's a 2v2. He comes back and gets one. If he can take down Frosty here, then maybe this will be one of the most intelligent plays we've seen in quite some time. Trippy gets it back, and it's all because of Formal. Here comes the push. Frosty will get a pull here, presumably. Yes, both flags are off the stand. Lucid gets the kill, though. He takes him down. Double push now coming in. There's a QT in operation as well. And Frosty's got that, as you can see on your screen. Trippy trying to survive, trying to die. Renegade's going to take him down, though. Both flags still out here. And a big frame play from Formal, but Frosty does get the pull off the stand. Keeps the flag alive. APG gets a touch. 2v2 right now. Lucid picks up another. And if a touch comes in in the next few moments for Optic Gaming, or they hop on that return, then they might be up one to zero. This is a fascinating standoff that we're watching right now. What a win from Frosty, by the way, from Connector. Not only did he need to kill Formal, he needed to start the two Optic on the re. get the pull. Optic on the re. APG, though, he gets taken down. He loses the 1v1. Royal 2, no shields whatsoever, but he sends that flag home. It's a hero play from Royal 2. Both flags now back home, and it feels like every single engagement, every single game type between these two teams is just perfectly executed. So dramatic. Both flags in the end of what was almost a four minute flag standoff will go back home, and we will stay here tied 0 0. You mentioned at the start of this series how things can just be decided by 1v1s sometimes. And there was another example of it. APG just couldn't get the trade. Got caught off guard a little bit by the flank coming in from Royal 2. He gets that return with no shields whatsoever. But after the four minute epic is done and the standoff, it's still tied up at 0 0. And still two dead for each side right now. Optic outslaying by a very, very small margin. It's 26 kills on the board to face is 24. Think about trying to overextend on that pink side once more. Gets cut down. And now Formal, who made a pretty good play from this position a few moments ago, is looking to get aggressive. Has the heat wave. And with that, we'll put more pressure onto FaZe! Thrusts away and snaps back for the double. That was four dead, but what a play from Snakebite. Snakebite was your first spawner. He spawns Fridge, he gets back in, and he takes down Formal, who was the priority. Formal was the biggest threat for the flagpole. And Snakebite, as your last player alive for FaZe, makes a hero play. That won't show up on the scoreboard, but it saves the flag stand for the side of FaZe Clan. Two dead here for Optic. FaZe have controlled their base well enough now to flush them out. Trippy with that QT managed to get out. And Snakebite might be finding that out himself. A little bit of help starting to come in. I like this reposition here. He's trying to be aggressive here with this QT. It's going to be expiring now, so he's not going to be able to return to top middle. It looks like FaZe Clan might have forgotten about Trippy. 
Worth mentioning just how impressive the QT usage has been as Trippy scans the back of the base. You saw Lucid in that last game as well. And compared to mid-season, the QT usage had just been min-maxed so well. Royal 2 with wow. great shots from the high gen. But you think back to just how instrumental that QT was in Lucid sprees in the game to Slayer. And to think that he had a spree of nine as part of that QT run. Keep an eye on that QT without a doubt throughout the rest of the game. APG being a nuisance right now for FaZe. He's just managed to overextend into the base. And now it's about, do we go forward? Do we go back for APG? Well, APG gave away his position and he was taken down by Renegade. Optic find themselves three in the death screen. This is a huge opportunity to move this flag for FaZe. Trippy was your last player alive. He is going to push back towards spawning teammates. Royal 2 presumably going to look for a kill here if he can. He does, and that's a big one. Three dead. Formal is your last player alive. Formal gets the stop. What can he do? He's down. Four down for Optic Gaming. This flag should go for FaZe. All Optic can do right now is watch this flag be run home. Lucy comes off the spawn. But Frosty's already back in his base. This is why it's one of FaZe's best game types. They get that first flag on the board and there's life in FaZe. Worth noting here that Optic Gaming was able to hold FaZe scoreless off of the opening six minutes, 15 seconds. Not easily done against a team that's 10-0 in this game type. However, FaZe now with even more control from top mid. I mean, look at the control they have. All of Optic are just trapped in the base. Reggae's going in with the QT. Can't quite pop it in time. I kind of love the idea. If you could have got that flag out and QT'd away, then Optic are forced to overextend out of the base to try and return that flag. Frosty now left on his own. And I tell you what, defensively, Optic have done superbly well. Faze impressively, though, with that first flag in there. Three dead. Renegade is your last player alive. Should pick up one. That's a double kill. Now a 1v1 momentarily against the APG. Yeah, APG's just come off spawn. The flag does go back. Oh, boy. Lucian finds out the Renegade can shoot pretty well. As Optic still find themselves too in the death screen. It's been complete control for the last minute or so from FaZe. It really has. It's been a fantastic minute and maybe even the last three minutes here from FaZe as they bring that flag in. Not only that, but they're also outslaying right now 48 to 40. Keep in mind the last time we checked in on the slaying total, it was Optic outslaying by two. So FaZe just completely dominating here. And they know, even though it's 1-0 here in Aquarius CTF, which is very low scoring for this game type, they know all it takes is one flag to win. Heatwave as well here. Optic pinned in their base. Formal are going to be just trying to push out. Not going to be oh, able to do boy. so. The wow. fade away again for the killing spree. As Optic just cannot get numbers on the map at the moment. It has been stifling. Map control coming in from FaZe. Killing spree, as you said, for Renegade. Finally, he's taken down. It was three dead for FaZe. Though, can Optic Gaming answer back here? Finally, Optic get a flag moving. And even though it's been a very dominant period of slays for FaZe Clan, it only takes one run for Optic to get back into this game. Snakebite's last alive now for FaZe. Formal's trying to move in, he's spotted him out, he's got a heat wave as well. APG needs, needs to buy time, just needs wow. to buy enough time. Snakebite though, gets the beat down and Formal cannot run this flag yet. Snakebite also gets a kill on APG there. He had to win a 1v1 and he had to get that damage as well on Formal. It's another hero play from Snakebite as the last player alive to keep FaZe in this. Keep an eye on the flag, Re. Royal 2's already there, that flag's gonna go back home. And what a play yet again from Snakebite who's 15 and 11. Now Optic with their opportunity taken away from them, stolen away from them, have to think about holding their side. APG gets traded out in the gen. FaZe keeping this pressure up. Frosty with another. Royal 2 going to be stuck behind himself. As now, Formal with that kill. Will allow Optic to move up the map. Formal just has a look in the way he's moving on this map at the moment that he wants to get inside that base. Going to challenge Renegade, but cut down by Frosty. He was just playing that position inside of the window. Really important wins there. From bottom middle, Formal looked like he was about to get right into the base. However, the spawners, as well as the work in courtyard for phase plan, will keep them here with a 1-0 to zero lead and the flag still on the stand. 2.45 left. I mean, can we talk about how close these teams are? We've already seen it, but it's 1-0 to zero with just two minutes left. Nothing between the two. It's a moment of brilliance or a mistake, usually, that separates the two. And you have to wonder just how much pressure FaZe is feeling here with 2.30 left on the clock. And with flags starting to get pulled off the same. Let's get to a listening with face plant. In RP, in RP. It's up where where is our closet? Kill me. Our closet. Top B, top B, top B. Top B, top B. Engine in top B. Our engine in top B. Top with us. 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 Top Guys, pull the flag. Pull the flag in the base. Conway, he has two. He has two. He has one. 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 He has
Mentor, 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 engine, there's engine, there's engine. He's on the heady, on the heady, one shot. On the heady, one shot. One in cell, one in cell, one in the heady. He's on the heady, one in the heady. He's on the heady, Okay, I'm yeah, they're kind of making plays, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Front base, front base, front base, front base. I'm here, John. I'm here. Our front, our front. I don't know where you went. Our front, our front. Our front, our front. Our front, our front. Guys, I'm at their base. I'm at their base. I'm here, I'm here. Our flag, our flag pulling. Our flag, our flag, our flag. Our flag, our flag, our flag. Nice job. Go, 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 go. Two dead, two dead, two dead. Our flag, our flag, one shot. Our flag, one shot. And they're from base. Watch out, our base. He's our from 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 base. He's one minute left in this game. Optic 2 dead and the flag moving again here for FaZe. Snakebite has got it all the way back. Trigger was lost. Look, the spawn comes in on the gen. They have to be careful. Snakebite wisely stays alive there. He needed to prioritize his life over the flag touch. They're going to look for more kills here on the gen side. And they will get them. Three dead for Optic Gaming. This is going to be the second flag going in, you would imagine. Last two players alive, desperately from P1 though. But surely oh. it's just a matter of time until FaZe come off the respawn and can get that home. Frosty with the touch. And maybe a little bit more heavy lifting than we expected in this situation. What does Lucid do here? Lucid gets taken down. Lucid was the player high gen. He was the big threat. APG now is your last player alive, and he's a spawner. Renegade gonna try and force this one home and should be able to do so. With that second flag. FaZe Clan are back in this series. There's 10 seconds left, and as good as Optica, you can't see him getting back to back caps in that time. That's such an important game, this for FaZe, and they will. With two seconds remaining, be back in this series. Base Clan will remain undefeated. 11-0 in Aquarius CTF. And as we said, they win the game type when they want it to perhaps win it the most. More than any other time in the series here in your Halo World Championship Grand Finals. In the end, they outplay Optic Gaming 84 to 70. Same way I said to us after one of those games, he was like, oh, pretty happy with that actually. Yeah. To the point now where they have found themselves in a position where they think they've mastered it. They've put that work in. The question is, have Optic put the same work in as FaZe Clan to take this away from them? Here we go then. Everything to play for. Does your grand final at the end of this game become 3-1 for Optic Gaming? Or will we be tied up at 2-2? Two two? The opening slays go the way of Optic Gaming. See if they can make a push off the back of it. Lucid gets that sniper rifle as well. Rule 2 will get a kill. Ooh, is a heat wave and that's certainly going to chunk. Three dead for Optic momentarily. Trippy, he's going to be weak as well. Renegade trying to play around that OS. The Shroud goes down beautifully as well. FaZe Shroud off the cut so no one can challenge it. This is early pressure for Optic to have, to have to overcome. They're two dead. And look at Snakebite. He is holding forward. He wants to kill everyone, including Formal. Fearless here. He gets the help as well. Renegade with a perfectly timed push on the big door. And you look at the fire in Snakebite's eyes in his player cam here. You have to think that game number three fired them up. And look at the Frosty was already in position to contest A as well. Two kills again for Optic Gaming. It's still pressure coming in from FaZe. They want this trip cap and they're going to get it. Lucid narrowly gets those bullets into Nest to win that 1v1. Snake bites the first to fall world too as well. Kills will be traded out with APG. So Optic get a foothold for now, but you can see the game plan for FaZe. They want to put the pressure onto Optic. They want to keep flying at them. Look for those trades in and around those strongholds that they control. And it's something we were talking about that Quadrant do so well, right? They're so good. If they control a, a stronghold to trading inside of it, it means you have to take that extra few seconds to jump back into a stronghold off of respawn to convert. And then you've got to fight again. Such an important part of the gameplay that we'll keep a very, very close eye on, as you say. FaZe already one-fifth of the way done in the game, leading 51-17. to 17. They're also outslaying just by a bit. It's 13-11. to 11. Snake Vibe playing a little bit of whack-a-mole there. He was uh, playing, cosplaying as, as the mole. Lucid is the man who has the mallet in his hands. Optic making oh the play onto A though. And Optic finally seems like they've got a little bit of control. Overshield coming up as well, but the two kills going down. Formal's going to have some heavy lifting to do with this OS in his hands. Heatwave coming up, and it looks like the play call from Optic is to play for that weapon. It was a very important grab there. They were two dead. Formal needed to grab that Overshield, but he had it. First of all, you also see they lose APG as well, so he is the last player alive, technically, though he does have spawners here. They needed this Overshield. He narrowly avoids the green gun twice. Cool and stays alive. How many times do we see that green gun connect with the Nova Shield, rip those shields off, and all of a sudden the OS is completely negated? Well, this time it doesn't connect. And FaZe, now they're under pressure themselves. AB is in the control of Optic Gaming. 
and FaZe Clan find themselves three dead and under pressure now. Trying to get your first spawner. How does Formal approach this? He's going to check back tower. This will be a big one. He won as well. That was your first spawner. They will keep FaZe on the respawn cycle. And just like that, Optic Gaming is back in the game. It was just 51 to 3. Now 65 to 33. Strong challenge coming out from Royal 2 there. Sniper rifle coming up top middle as well. And that certainly can help you with a two cap setup, let alone a triple cap. Royal 2 for the slide. No trade though for him. Formal might be able to turn two, but Renegade will clean things up with that sniper rifle. It's a double kill for him, but off the back of it, Optic find themselves three dead, and it's going to be a trip cap here momentarily for FaZe. And Lucid was your first spawner as well. That's going to give them a clear trip cap here, the first of the game. 74 to 41, FaZe starts to pull away yet again. Optic allowed to cap eight. Not enough map pressure from FaZe, not enough damage done to try and collapse and keep that triple cap in their hands. Renegade being a good teammate. Overlooking. Snake bite. Renegade says to Formal, I prefer you not to cap this stronghold. Just shoves him out with that repulse for a few seconds. Buys just a bit extra time, as you say. B eventually is going to flip, so that means Optic Gaming will be scoring, but not before. Nice distance here from Renegade. It'll just be the Guardian Angel, as it says on the screen. Formal's been such a nuisance here, and finally, We'll be sent off the map and away from this fight. And to be honest with you, it was like Renegade kind of swatting a fly away, which is bugging him in and around that tower. How rare of a mind the gap angle is that? All the way from the ramp, all the way off. Formal on the unlucky receiving end of that. Ping's going down. Royal 2, though, most importantly. They find themselves with a man three man advantage. That was three dead. They're going to get Cypher over Shield and will continue scoring. And here comes the push to see. Immediate pressure on the respawners as well. Trippy will fall. There's another player in the nest that Royal 2 is trying to hunt down with this overshield. APG and Lucid working together. APG will be traded out, but they want the triple cap here. Lucid tries to fly around the corner. He has the green gun and the repulse, and Lucid will not win the fight as Royal 2 trusts that battle rifle like he had so many times before. He's going to also finish on B here. The pressure will come in, but Royal 2 plays it so well to ensure that FaZe continues scoring. Renegade's already 13 and 4, by the way, and Royal 2 is 12 and 6. These are the two Slayers that we talked about. And surprise, surprise, they're popping off here in game number four. APG with the first pick, Formal with the second, Snakebite answers back. The game wants to try and finish off that damage, but Khan gets baited out just a little, a little bit too hungry for that kill. And Optic with some great teamwork again. Keep themselves alive and manage to flip B, but look at FaZe, out rotating here at A. And even though Optic are going to play for C, Snakebite's going to be able to take this fight a bit with the heat wave. Let's see, he's getting pillar challenge though from Formal, which is a really important angle. However, the spawner is certainly going to help them as they push out a big door. APG now left to defend it on his own. Well, like I mentioned, taking this battle with a heatwave usually gives you the advantage, and even though APG does an amazing job to get that kill, eventually with Optic 2 dead, FaZe will be able to retake B and C as well. Renegade now gonna make that push as well. Like Pressure, said, eh? Still a two-man advantage. Renegade's Renegade gonna need to go here. Trippy starts at A. He has Lucid's help as well, so they need to be careful with how they play this. Trippy will be taken down. Lucid now last alive, and now it's time to try and triple cap. Lucid's trying to be sneaky, trying to be obnoxious. And hopefully buys himself enough time to survive and get his teammates back on the map. But Renegade is having none of it. Face Clan looking for the triple cap once again. They are starting to run away with this. And with another clean wipe and perfect play and another over shield, Face Clan looks to be firing on all cylinders. Let's get to a listen-in with Face Clan. Hey, 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 I'm looking back to the inside, 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 inside. inside. No, I'm flying in this room. Yo, John, can you look up? I got cap. Yeah, yeah, can you get cap? Yeah, I got a PJ. Uh, actually, we're, we're, we're just going to hold. 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 I'm watching you, I'm watching you. Hey, bye, hey, bye. Yeah, we're holding, we're holding. 25 Vigor. Vigor, Vigor, Vigor. Vigor. Yeah, I have Vigor, I have Vigor, I have Vigor. Nothing Vigor, look pillars. I'm Vigor, watching pillars, Vigor, Vigor. Yeah, yeah, bro. I think they're gonna hit, right? They're gonna hit up. Repulsor stuff. Repulsor, A5, A5 weak. Yo, Vigor, Vigor, Vigor. They're gonna come up, Vigor, they're gonna come up. The one inside kick tribute. They're gonna hit me. They're gonna hit Vigor. Pillars, pillars coming, pillars coming. Two pillars, two pillars, man. Weak, weak, that's training. Training me, training me, training me, training me, training me. Three, three, don't hit me. The other one's one back B. Training, training in two back B. Training in two back B. Waste ammo. Pillars on you, pillars on you. Make sure your snipe goes off, John. I should fuck I'm here, 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 I'm here,
training. Where are you getting this? Where are you getting this? I'm gonna go big doors. Two one man, two one man. They're weak, they're weak, they're weak. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they're going pillars, going pillars. Pillars it, pillars it. Yeah, I'm gonna clear your mud. I'm clear your mud. Don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it. I can cap mat. Oh, this guy's OS, 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 I saw him, I saw him. Yo, they're Opt to get the next over shield. There could be a real opportunity for them to turn this game around. They have the heat wave as well. And now the phase comes. Maybe it's time for Optic to start having their say in this game that we have in front of us. Let's see what they can do. Lucid now. Still working here on C3. Dead. Frosty's your last player alive here. The 2v1 with Lucid and Formal. Frosty wins that battle though, and it's so important because he keeps B in the control of phase. Now they can take A off the rotation. And that one win has completely kept phase in control of this map. AB still the hold. 3v3 on the map right now. As Formal's probably thinking about A. When you talk about the scoreline here, still 185 to 102. How much momentum did phase take from that Aquarius CTF? You could argue the perfectly positioned game type for them to get back in this series, not just on the scoreboard, but also in terms of momentum and energy as well. Just a shout out, by the way, Renegade. He's 21 and 11 in this game. Absolutely ridiculous stat line, but you have to make sure that that stat line turns into a win. Optic now making their play onto B. Three dead here. Snake Light, last alive here for FaZe. One thing we got to hear during that listening, which was fantastic, was Renegade making the play call for Every things like Big Let's go all three, let's go right now. Or even times when they needed to reset, saying new play, new play, wait for each other. Really good communication and coordination has given them this 100 point lead. And the game with a win pot middle. And now maybe a different play call coming in as well. They've got a little bit more freedom to decide if it's going to be C or B. A kill does get traded out though, which means it's going to be a 3v3. But Royal 2 causing a distraction here. Should, and I say should, allow Snake Rider to uncontested take B because Optic, they're gonna play for right. You saw Formal was the man who wrote it's a base trade. Formal coming all the way around here. However, FaZe now gonna respond to that base trade. They're gonna get to C right after Optic gets to A as well. Here's the 1v1. Should be able to get C, but now there's a player on the cards, but here comes Snake Bite. He'll take two to the grave with him. The overshield has just come up as well. If FaZe get this, oh. then oh my word, they might be close, but Trippy has something to say about it. It was a 2v2 now, Renegade's your last player alive. After Trippy hits the brainer on Frosty on Sandbag, Trippy will be able to flip, presumably, and he also has Heat Wave and Repulsor as well. Enemy team to not cool. just secure B, but push out to A as well. He's gonna get reset. See, they just almost a slither away from getting themselves, but... A double cap will have to do here, but look at the power that Trippy has in his hands. Heatwave, Sniper, Repulse. Oh. But Frosty, he's got the moves and he's got the shot with the battle rifle to match him. Oh, oh my god! What Trippy puts it to use though. What a reversal here. Trippy somehow stays alive in a very, very difficult scenario. However, it's phased that at back B gets the last lap. Clear it out by Snakebite. He'll grab the Repulse, he'll grab the Snipe as well. Royal 2 already on the flank of Tower. They use the ammo up. There's four repulses here, by the way, for Snakebite to play with. Two dead for Optic. Enemy team and FaZe now looking for a triple cap. It will be a triple cap. APG is last alive. And although the start of this series was looking all FaZe, Optic, I should say, excuse me. FaZe are coming back into this one. And if they win this fight, they should win this game. Snakebite clubs off. He comes back to B with two tap of the heat wave as well. He gets the clean B reset. And at 241, FaZe will continue scoring. From 2-0 down to potentially tie this series up at 2-2-2. Two two. FaZe will do it! We got a series on our hands, everyone! Screen, we're going straight into the gameplay here in your game number five, Slayer. This will be the go-ahead game. The team that wins this one will be one game away from winning the series. Well, it's a big game. And we start off with the POV of Big Game Trip. He's got that camo early on. We'll be able to take down Renegade. Easy kill for him. Shock Rifle's going to be up as well. He should be able to lock this one down. Beautiful shot to take down Snakebite and Royal 2. He knows his angles. Oh boy. A dangerous peak and he knows it. You talk about Big Game Trip and Trippy has been unbelievable in Slayers this year. It seems that he just hits a different level, not just this season, but specifically in Slayers, so often with enormous stat lines all year long. Can he do it again here in game number five? Shock rifle in hand, tied up two to two. 
Well, I can guarantee you this game isn't going to be a fast-paced one. It's going to be slow-paced for every shot that is taken. He's going to swing the momentum one way or the other. And then the pressure on your shoulders, if you are the player, that is holding this shock rifle in your hands. It's pretty difficult to recreate it unless you're sat in a chair in the grand finals of the Halo World Championships. Mark, you put it perfectly. There is a hush over this room, not just on your main stage, but throughout the entire venue. Sold out crowd, by the way, here at the Halo World Championship. And everyone very, very tentatively on the edge of their seat, seeing how this might play out. As you said, oh, only oh. two kills on the board, but it only took one to blow things wide open for Optic Gaming. Will Optic push off the back of it? That's the question, right? They get those kills, and now they're going to try and flood. They have the information of where the last two players from Fades are. Trippy trying to anchor. Frosty going to give away his position, but now the flank of the reach ball comes in. Trippy has to be careful. He's thinking about playing the shock. Has I think that he has to play the shock. Four dead for Optic Gaming, and FaZe answer back. Despite finding themselves two dead, and on the verge of being pushed, they finally dig deep, and they force the play of the shock. So that rifle will no longer be in play, and they lead by two. Camo coming up as well. Royal two. The plasma pistol just playing behind the crates. Nobody made a move on the camo quite yet, but Luce is going to get that kill, and that's going to open the map. Trippy has, for the second time in the game, now found himself the camouflage. Question is, is he going to try and play for a weapon, or is he going to try and play for some trades? Did oh, he get stuck? Oh. Ooh, it was a little bit spoopy, but he got away with things. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. It's trippy. It's it's Neo. Oh. This is not Trippy anymore. It's Neo. Speaking of spooky, three plasma nades and three of them avoided, and then very Matrix-esque, as you say. Trippy trying to stay alive, but he gets forced out. But has he done enough damage for Lucy to hit this flank? And now he comes back. Snake by stays alive. Frosty there to support him. Oh boy, Lucy comes this. in now, though, gets one. He's trying to clean up the damage, but with how tight the two players are playing, can't overextend and know that giving away that death is not going to be worth it. But the end of it, Optic. Going to elite. It's 10 to 9 in the favor of the green wall. Man, just so nuanced there. Look at Lucid staying alive yeah. just long enough to do one more shot into Snake Bite, which allows the trade at bottom tower. That's what we're talking about. It is a game of inches in every single engagement, and now once again, it's tied up at 10. Repulses Royal 2 back as well as that grenade. But the biggest story here is I think the Renegade just got that shark rifle. You saw it pop up in the kill feed. Optic have phase trap though. FaZe are going to try to escape, and with the grapple, Renegade's going to take some space, but can he take some faces? Damage on Trippy, however, not a headshot. Forced to retreat. Both teams happy to see how this one plays out for just another moment. Optic will get the opening kill from APG, though. Renegade answers back. One headshot good enough. APG gets another one to keep that one kill advantage here in the hands of Optic. Lucid will take down Snake by APG. Learns where Renegade is, and even though the kills have been going the way of Optic, you've now got Shock and Camo in the hands of FaZe. And how fitting, Trippy goes bottom middle, he says, usually when I'm down here, there's a Camo, what's going on? <laughs> Royal 2 had already snuck away with it, and this will be FaZe's first Camo of the game. They're down by one, Royal 2 able to make the play here, how does he do? And look how tight Optic are playing right now, all playing next to each other. Formal does have a Shock himself, though. So Royal 2 is very aware that if he makes a play right now, that he's going to be running into multiple That's Optic it. players, and Optic just waits it out. Uh, they wait it out, and Royal 2 actually tries to bait with a, his frag there, and hoping that a tower push would come to the camo, but Optic Gaming, like you said, they play perfectly tight, they bait out the camo, and FaZe is not able to use that camo to push at all. That will maintain the two-kill Optic Gaming lead. Snakebite should fully be repulsed, but he might have done it a little bit too early. Renegade on the flank though, Snakebite bought just enough time for Renegade to come in and get two kills. Royal 2 looking to move in and clean up some damage. Royal 2 somehow comes out of that situation with a double kill. And we have a tie game. Ooh, big kill. We, we, we need to watch a Royal 2 POV. Yeah, yeah Royal 2 Snakebite. He just ran out of shock ammo. Long cool. time duo picking up those two kills. Eventually I'll have a sidekick and knowing him, he'll put on a show with that weapon as well. 638 left in the game and two kills there from World 2 and Snake, but we'll give them a little bit of a lead here for the first time in several minutes of play. Another example of how you have to make a huge play to get any advantage on the map at the moment. It was Royal 2 who flies in, cleans up one, uses that shock rifle, crunches another kill. And that's where the swing came in. 15 seconds till the camo comes up. Formal was bottom middle. He actually hits a very nice drop slide that needed to off of the camo boxes to retreat to stacks. He actually gets punished though. Renegade decides to wrap that. 
And in the trade, it's going to be FaZe that wins the battle in a 2v1 battle, bringing us now to 21-18, a three-kill lead. Lucy trying to make a move for that camo. Let's pick it up. And it looks like FaZe are happy to let Optic have that and not trade out a kill for it. However, Renegade will go down. So now there's a chance for Optic to get back into this. They have momentary 4v3 on the map, and they have Lucid on the prowl. They've kept Lucid here to four and three. Low numbers by his standards. Pink's going down. Doesn't want to waste the camo, just giving the info here. Lucid with the game in his hands, but not much camo left. And FaZe doing exactly what Optic did a few moments ago. Trying to play close, trying to make sure they can trade. But look at Optic, they're trying to isolate the two. The only problem is, one of those two players was Royal 2. He gets the kill, Renegade gets another. Optic fall apart on the push. And even though APG is trying to clean up the pieces, it's FaZe that holds strong. It is brilliant from FaZe. It's a very interesting timing push there. The reason that Lucid does that with the camo is he grapples across to heaven to avoid the pipe sideline. If everything else in the optic push works out, that's a great play because all of a sudden he has an unbelievable vantage point on the rest of Elevator. However, as his teammates fall, the whole push crumbles and it leads to a five kill lead here for FaZe Clan at the midpoint. Could be extended as well, because Frosty has this shock rifle in his hand. You can see he's trying to play some aggro, trying to find some bodies. He's going to spy out APG. Does he get the stick? Doesn't need to! Because Lucid will peak, and Frosty will accept. Should be cleaning up this one as well. Two dead for Optic, and now what was the five kill lead extends to seven. You get the feeling that FaZe's momentum has continued here into game five as well, with 4.23 left on the clock. Seven kills the advantage, but just remember, it's around a seven kill advantage in game number two, if I'm not mistaken, that was in the favor of FaZe, and they threw that game away. So Optic will keep that in the memory. It's the recent memory as well, knowing that they can make these comebacks. Things have slowed down to a crawl. You get the feeling that Optic knows just how much is on the line here. Only about 30 minutes ago, they were leading by two in the grand final. And how much things have changed. They don't want to throw this game away as well. Two more kills for FaZe. Frosty going to reach out as well onto Trippy. He wants this, but can't connect with the head. Royal 2 will be there to clean up some damage, though, and he gets the camo for FaZe. Almost more important for him to get the camo and keep it out of the hands of Optic than it is to do anything with it himself. 24 kills for Optic. The lead's still heavily in the favor of FaZe, though. Plenty of time here in the end for a team like Optic Gaming to bring it back. The question is, can they do it against FaZe's current momentum and composure? Looking too strong. Three players in tunnel, this is dangerous. It's a repulse battle at the moment. This is like something out of Star Wars, but Lucid surviving for now, as is Renegade. Renegade flies in! It's three dead for Optic, though. And Snakebite gets the final. Optic fall on their push. They had to make the play, Andy. They had to try and force the pace. And FaZe, once again, just holds strong in their setup. And what a sequence of events for FaZe. Forced you. Whenever you see Optic Gaming with three players in Repulsor Tunnel having to push with their backs turned, you know things are bad for Optic Gaming, and FaZe has pinched them in the perfect way. 36 to 28 now after several sequences of four dead. Here comes the Optic push. Cross is just gonna try and get out of there. He does have the grapple if he wants to try and escape a little bit quicker. Renegade will get a trade. But you can see now, with the way the game is formulated, Optic are just being forced to push. They're down by such a margin, with only two and a half minutes left. They have to keep trying to push the place. pace. They have to keep trying to make FaZe fall into a three or four dead situation where they can cycle them. And it's so tough against a team that's so talented and has a player like Frosty with a shot in his hand too. And FaZe is doing so well on what we talked about earlier in the series. You cannot give Optic repeated opportunities to bring the game back because as we saw earlier in the series, even if they're down by 10 slays, they will come back, they will bring it back. FaZe has been so disciplined in getting the first kill, the first pick every single time here. Thank you, advantage. Camo is coming up, and maybe this is the last roll of the dice. It's going to be Formal who gets it. Renegade, though, once yeah. again in the kill feed, just working around the camo. And before they can even make a play, There's Formal's one. going to be there. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Formal going to be wondering what on earth might have happened there, but it looked like it would have been a free two. Formal around 2,000 people, everyone watching at home, but it's not going to count. And maybe that is a sign of things going well for FaZe. Another Renegade with a kill. double. Making triple. a triple! Renegade trying to close this one out in style here. It's four to go here for FaZe. Only four to go. 46-34, one minute left. And as you said, 
Formal with the camera play, hoping something might happen. Instead, disasters in the long haul. Melee doesn't connect there. And minute remaining. 59 seconds on the clock here with 46-34. Really just a bit of a formality with Faze. And the one thing you can maybe say that will bring some sort of comfort is that the lead for Faze was such that even with the double kill, it may not have influenced that game too, this game too much. Optic making a little bit of a late game rally though. However, it looks like unfortunately we're going to have to wait for a resolution to that game. Snake by its game, unfortunately, looks like it might have just uh, needs to restart at the wrong time. Well, an update for everybody who's watching. Some sportsmanship actually coming in from the side of Optic Gaming. They're going to forfeit that game. They knew that they weren't going to win that one. They thought that one was done and dusted. So it will be FaZe Clan credited with the win in that game. And I've got to say, a hats off to Optic Gaming for that decision. A lot of teams would not have made that. Solitude King of the Hill. If it goes the way of FaZe, we reset the bracket and we go once more. Last time we saw these two teams play this game type, Optic Gaming 4-0 in the King of the Hill match to bounce back in your series in the winner's finals in a huge way. We'll see if they can do it again here and send the series the distance. We're underway. On board with the Demon himself. A couple of kills going to go the way of FaZe, and that's an opportunity for them to jump into this hill. Instead, he's going to try and challenge bomb middle. Trick is there to support Formal, but Formal will be cleaned up as Frosty now moves towards that hill. Sniper rifle in the hands of FaZe as well. And we saw what Frosty could do with this weapon. Trippy was your last player alive. He comes out of yard into cafe. He split. Notice that. We'll see if they can isolate the 1v1s here. Double push coming in. And those soda stairs. APG is going to jump up towards Cine and Man, just to survive for now. Renegade will get that first pick though. Renegade will be traded out by Lucid. And you can see that no team wants to step inside that vulnerable top middle hill until they have the slaves to go alongside it. Staying alive on truck. Pressure is coming in here. Trippy was the first to fall. Formal falls yet again. So that will be continued man advantage here. Two man advantage. Three man advantage for FaZe. Beautifully done by FaZe. And now Renegade says, I'm happy to step in that hill. Bit of a more of a chunk of a time going over to the side of FaZe. And now they're just looking for those spawns. Optic's still two dead. Make it one dead. APG gonna poke. Frosty can't connect with that shot. All the second, they're narrowly missing, but missing they are. And it's safe to say that FaZe has really continued where they left off in game number three. It felt like oh, it hits another one. It feels like they've been in control since game three. And that's the pressure shot, right? Because he misses two. His teammates fall around him. And then the most difficult shot of them all, you would say, he has to hit and he hits it. That's what this game is about. That's how tight it is. Snake by now steps inside of that objective. But Trippy gonna be challenging. Trippy could fall as well, but no, a big win here from Trippy on the snipe side. Very big win. Needs to stay alive. He does have Lucius morning truck as well. And that is going to turn the tide. Look at that. One battle, like we said. Keep an eye on these pivotal 1v1s. They will decide the series. They will decide the world championship. Royal 2 moving out. Frosty and Renegade get two. Optic Gaming on the back foot. APG trapped on the snipe side. Royal 2 looking for him. The thrust is good, but the trade comes in from bottom middle. Former was there, but he's nowhere near this hill. Face Clan completely controlling it and decide to overslay once more Ooh. to make sure that Formal was not a problem. Renegade drops down to try to help oh. out. Trippy wins the battle, a key one against Snakebite. Just as quickly as we thought, FaZe might be closing out the top middle first hill. They do find themselves two dead, make it three dead. One is a spawn recycled. Now Optic trying to stay alive on your first hill. Trying to look a little bit desperate, this from Optic moving towards that hill. Snakebite comes in for the help. Two dead here for Optic once more. Renegade trying to survive. As Lucid will win his 1v1, but Frosty's there. APG moves out and phase the three dead. Frosty last alive once more. Let's see what Frosty does. He wants his sniper rifle. He's probably going to get away with it as well. And based on the timing, Optic needs to go now. They do. APG knew that Frosty was going to have three spawning teammates around Snipe 1 and Snipe 2. It's a great push from APG. Eventually, they'll trade it out with Royal 2. Beautiful shots coming in from Royal 2. The shots look pretty good from APG, but Royal 2's looked even better. And now phase move on that hill. Formal trying to control S3, and Trippy will get the kill on the hill to just stagnate that scoring once more, but look how close FaZe are. But Formal, he's found a sniper, and he's found the body and the toes of Frosty. 2v2 here. Snake back gets in. Formal has to challenge. Challenge he does. Body he does. He's got to be a one-man army right now, Formal. Everybody's pushing in. He can't quite connect. Royal 2 just giving him so much 
pressure that he has to deal with and Frosty continues. Three dead here for Optic and surely FaZe will step inside this hill. Trippy knows he has the challenge but he's not going to be able to. FaZe go up by one. It's a one hill advantage as now we move to the driveway. And keep in mind that first hill takes a lot of time off of the game clock. There's only 2.17 left in the game clock and of course in Halo Infinite when you are in the hill that game clock will freeze. So there's more than 214 total. However, with three dead for Optic Gaming, FaZe is already looking good here on your driveway they hill. They certainly are. They won the rotate as well, so it's not just that first hill. You can see they're around 20% done on the next one, and they still have those transforms coming in. A couple of kills starting to favor Optic Gaming, though. Trippy gets one, but immediately the trade is there, and the efficiency at which FaZe are trading out kills, Andy, has really stood out to me ever since that game number three. You put it perfectly, Mark. FaZe is outslaying 34 to 23, an unbelievable margin at this stage of the game. And now with less than two minutes on the game clock and about 30 or 40% of the way done on your second hill, FaZe still looking good. However, Optic Gaming may be able to get three dead here if they get the kills on loop. Yeah, Lucid, oh, Lucid just did some magic, just dancing around the loop and managing to survive long enough to come back out, get those shields back and pick up two kills on his way to helping Optic break. But here comes Royal 2, he's trying to hunt down the fork. So let's go off to chat in the room. And they're gonna look to their all-star players here as Trippy and Lucid who tag team together on the driveway to make it two dead. Let's not forget in that last game, FaZe did so well. Oh my, good shots from Lucid. Eventually he's traded out. FaZe did so well to shut down Lucid. What did we say? He was the only player to go double positive in that last layer. However, in that last game, he was reduced to only positive one. If they continue this, they will continue to find success. But Optic Gaming now taking a slight lead on your second hill. It's so close. It's pretty much tied up. There's nothing between the two teams. Royal 2 will go down. APG. A little bit of assistance will get that kill. Renegade trying to survive. Renegade will come back out and get two, but there's Lucid. So 2v2 at the moment is a consistent scrap for these spawns. Lucid in the 1v1. The thrust from Frosty does not save him. And Lucid wins such a vital battle. A pivotal moment in that 2v2, as you say. That will lock down driveway here for Optic Gaming. They will stay in the lead in your second hill. Only one minute and four seconds left on the game clock. Right now, they are poised to tie the game. But here comes the push. Three-man push. They just want to get him out of the hill. However, the grenade comes in, Formal comes in, 2-4 for FaZe. And with APG and Formal still stood inside of this hill, it's up to Frosty to get him out. Optic Gaming are four dead, and now they're on the back foot. FaZe stand inside of the hill. The game plan might have just changed with 55 seconds left. They can't afford to just play for Slays. Look at the timing, look at the scoreboard here. Optic Gaming was moments away from closing out. The hill, the three men push paced off through the light rifle tunnel now, and it only needs to be one additional hold, and FaZe is still out slaying. Real 2 gets another one, formal. He's been spied out, but he's not gonna be able to get there, and FaZe double up. 52 seconds left on our game clock, and FaZe, I mean, the resilience this team has shown in this series is absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable, 48 seconds left now, because those first two hills were such well fought battles from both sides. FaZe Clan will lead 2-0 to zero with only 43 seconds left on the clock. All they need to do is defend, wait, and bait out the hill. APG still alive, but he'll go down. We saw where Trippy was. He was top of the sniper tower. Frosty will take down Lucid. His three dead Trippy nowhere near. And FaZe are just adding to their stats right now. If they can keep Optic Gaming out of this hill, they will win the series and we will go again, everyone. Trippy wins a 1v1, there's a last player alive, but it took so much time off the clock. Only 25 seconds left on the face side. You know that they know they have so much time here. 20 seconds left on the game clock. That's all they have to do is get through this period. Formal inside of the hill. Royal 2 trying to force him out. Just remember, if Optic are in the hill, the game clock does stop. So even though 20 seconds might not seem like much, it's a little bit more than you think. But with the kills starting to stack up, and Trippy is last alive. Surely, surely FaZe are gonna win this game. Back to back, three deads yet again. Formal does spawn in sight, but needs to be a Hail, Hail Mary play from Optic Gaming here and now. They're not gonna be able to do it. Last two alive from Optic are in the hill. If FaZe can take them both out, then FaZe Clan will have closed out this game. FaZe Clan reset the bracket in Seattle. The Halo World Championships is not done yet.
Just remember, it's four back-to-back -back games now that FaZe have won. But take yourself back one year ago, and it was four back-to-back -back games that sent SSG to a bracket reset. From there, Optic Gaming went on to become your Halo World Champions. There's a lot more Halo left in this series, but now it's a shooter to decide who will become your Halo World Champs. Your second series here and the final series of not just the Halo World Championship, but the entire season. Only one team will hoist the trophy. Right now, it sits equidistant from them at the center of the stage, and we're in to game number one of your reset. Well, this is a much better start here from Optic. They've already got B, bottom middle control, so important. Renegade, he's been pushed by Trippy. It's one dead, but it's two caps. And Optic Gaming will start scoring here with controller snipe and controller bottom middle. Optic Gaming knows what FaZe could do against them on this game type. As you said, devastated by FaZe earlier on, on this exact game type earlier in the weekend. They know the work that needs to be done and just how talented FaZe could be on the game type. Snakebite wins the 1v1. Formal has the sniper rifle though, and we know that playing around this truck and hotel is so good at locking down these angles. However, FaZe are stacking bottom middle at the moment, and they will get the conversion. Players sliding by Formal at the moment. Formal's under pressure, and here comes Renegade. He hits the body, but it's not good enough. Two dead here for Optic then. Kill traded out in the favor of FaZe. That's three dead here. Might be a triple cap as well here for FaZe. And warning signs starting to show for Optic Gaming. They've got more points than they did the last time these two teams met on this game type, but this situation is what led to FaZe running away with it. It was. Kills cleaned up as well. And it has been constant spawn rotations yet again. And the damage continues to come in for FaZe Clan right now. Outslaying 9 to 5 off the open. APG last alive, first off spawn. Waiting for the spawns. Look at Renegade. Didn't look at those spawns to try and influence where Optic Gaming were going to be spawning on the map. Lucid. Very aware of what's going on, but this triple cap is continuing and Renegade's reign of terror. It continues alongside it. And how about the side of FaZe Clan? What a good omen for them to see this game type as their game number one in the series, knowing they already wrecked Optic Gaming in this exact game type this weekend already. I was about to say, a triple cap's been in effect for quite some time, and the craziest that was Frosty didn't even have a kill. Optic Gaming are four dead again. And now they're spawning down on the bottom of the snipe, and they're gonna get cycled again, you would imagine. Two dead still, yeah. Renegade's gonna continue to apply the pressure here. Likely lift up here on S2. APG has no idea he's there. There's the bandit, and even with a repulse, APG can't survive. Optic are against the ropes right now. Renegade looking for yet another kill here. Lucy gives him the wiggles, but it's a killing spree. Three dead again for Optic. They're barely on the map here, Andy. This is getting ugly. It is. And like you said, more points on the board for Optic Gaming, but if we're honest, not by much. It's already 151 to 22. Trippy first Warner already taking damage. APG trying to force spawns himself, or force himself off of the spawn, I should say. Snipe's coming up in a second as well. And even though Optic stemmed the bleeding, that cut is deep. It's 170 points to 22. And Renegade has got the long stick in his hands again. A deep cut. Oh. Indeed, he's not done. Connects with Lucid out of the loop. And just because we might not have much time left in this game, number one, let's get to a listening with face clamp. I'm not going to say something. Yeah, 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 I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Got you. Got you. Not Agri Cross. Three, three, Yo, they're yeah. aping hotel guys. Aping yeah, hotel. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 and FaZe Clan just moments away from closing out game one. This is unbelievable. Devastating here. Optic just doing whatever they can to try to oh stay alive. Oh my god! Renegade has been a menace! Blink and you would have missed it. FaZe Clan tear apart Optic Gaming in game number one. Tie up the series here. FaZe though looking to go up 2-0. to zero. Backs against the wall. Kind of the story of Optic season so far. But they came out of it at the last event to prove they are still one of the best in the world. The question is, are they good enough to deal with what FaZe are bringing to the table right now? What The first kill will go in the favor of FaZe and the heat wave will go there as well. Look how non-traditional this start is, right? Everything slowed down. It becomes a, just a battle at the 50 yard line with both teams trying to just play chess with one another, getting the opening damage. 
Three to two, the score. Pongwa will be cleaned up. The heat wave will stay in the command of FaZe Clan. Obviously got themselves a couple of really important trades in that opening battle as well, because it felt like for a second that it was going to be a four, four to zero start for FaZe Clan. And the Optic were going to be under pressure even more. But Form with a couple of kills has kept his team in this one. Big kills, as you say, big damage there. Very easily could have been 4 to 0 had they not answered back in the way they did. But they get three dead for phase. Now tied 5 5. Oh! Renegade doesn't even get a shot. You can see two players actually pitched in there. And I think the audio cues were a little bit confusing. What way he wanted to look? Was it left? Was it right? And even with a heat wave, if you can't decide on one target, you're not going to get to pull that trigger. And Optic go into a lead. And after that last game, I think they would have forgotten how that felt. Certainly here. And it's just... Uh, the fact that we have these two teams here with just the ability that they are finding each game. Tries to get the trade, can't. Frosty eventually takes down Lucid bottom middle in a very impressive micro battle. Keeps phase within two. Optic fans trying to will their team back into the winning side of the column. Get those games on the board. They know what a difference they can make to their team. And Trippy, with that commando, is going to get one just to give Optic a little bit of a foothold. But look how slow this game is, Andy. It's I Aquarius like, Slayer, and it is almost at a standstill. Exactly what I was going to say, Mark. I think everyone watching is thinking the same exact thing. How often do you see an Aquarius Slayer play this way? The gameplay specifically and the flow of the gameplay is just indicative that so much riding on this game type. We never see a play this slow and this methodical, but neither team wanting to be the one that makes the mistake here. And the game gets the QT. Is that going to allow the freedom? to make some plays. He will find Trippy and Formal will fall as well. So the lead extinguished here. We're tied up at 11 to 11 and Renegade keeps flying forward. He has the QT. So he should be gathering info. He just played Scout. And each time we're in a Slayer, you're going to hear the same theme. Once again, it's been Lucid. Get the trade there, by the way. Three dead for FaZe. It's a 2v1 Trippy and Formal versus Frosty at the moment. Frosty likely going to Scarper back to teammates. Frosty gets away. And with FaZe Clan all respawning, Frosty comes back and says Trippy shouldn't be chasing us. Because that's what can happen. 14 to 14. Nine minutes left. And with the speed this game is being played at, Andy, it wouldn't surprise me to see yet another Slayer game not go to 50. And how often do we see these teams tied throughout these games? It's truly just so evenly matched at 14 to 14. Let's get to a listening with Optic Gaming. One, one, one. Blue card jump. Two guys card. Two guys card. Two guys pink. Card jump. Card jump. Blue card jump. Blue card jump. Jumping up. Jumping up. Jumping up. Jumping up. Card two weeks. Nice. Last two. Nice. Last two. Thank you. Probably up, guys. Red thrust. Red thrust is up, guys. Yeah, yeah. I have yellow jet, guys. I have yellow jet. Guys, blue thing shoot. Grab this. Grab this, guys. I'm looking at blue fire. Blue thing shoot. 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 Blue
that we have to highlight once again. It was always a matter of keeping Lucid in the Slayer specifically limited in what he's able to do in terms of total game impact on the Optic Gaming side. When FaZe was on the receiving end of losses, it was Lucid going double positive in Slayers. And since FaZe caught fire in your first Grand Final, they have kept Lucid to only 7 and 8 in this game and also limited once again in terms of overall damage and output in the Slayers overall. It has been a key to success, but there's still half of the game yet to play. Renegade just collected that thrust that spawned on the phase side of the map, so he's going to be probably a little bit more likely to be the aggressor in this situation. As Royal 2 is going to be playing Anchor and trying to bait some players in from Opti. And again, your screen now. Like I mentioned, two thrusts to play with. APG going to be pushing, but he's got to reload. There's a thrust, but Formal's got one as well. APG there to keep him alive, but look how weak these players are from Optic. Three of them trapped in the fridge. Wow, that is a strong, strong fridge holding all of Optic Gaming roster weak. And they do manage to get their shields recharged and push back out. As you said, Formal picks up another one. So Formal staying alive with that thrust 1v1 not only gets him that first kill, stays alive for the second and helps them get back out of fridge. That is now a three kill lead here for Optic Gaming. But we're getting aggressive as well. He went for that stick, but he's going to pay for it. And that's why you see in the risks having to be calculated. APG! Oh! Frosty with that win and the thrust has just dragged FaZe back into this. It's a one kill game. Optic still in the lead, but two dead at the moment. Lucid just gives him a cushion. An excellent thrust there. Comes back with the heat wave as well. And just like you said, it was always going to be the heat wave and thrust that were going to be the difference maker in these Aquarius games. No surprise it's the case here as well. World 2 barely gets away from the dynamo damage. He will live to tell the tale and circle back with the team. But look how Optic is stacked here, making the car side push. Frosty trying to bait out. APG gets the kill though onto Renegade. And now FaZe having to escape. Frosty manages to do so, knowing the value of this weapon. Lucid going top middle, survives. As Frosty goes on the hunt, making sure that he's clearing out the closet to make sure that he's got a base to push from. And how fitting that once again it has fell silent here in Seattle despite the sold out crowd. So much on the line, it's a one kill game at 30 to 29. Four minutes left. One kill the difference and it's Frosty who starts to burst to life. Renegade looking to move forward. Game's still going, everyone. Don't panic too much. And based on player reactions there. Hey, maybe we're not. Game's still going. Looks like we might have lost the observers here. We'll get word from our station referees on exactly how we'll continue to play out, but we have an eye on player cams, and so do you. It looks like still in game here. Have to see how this progresses here. The all players still in the match. However, just losing an observer, we should be able to get back in shortly. Yeah, we should do indeed. We've got a feed at the bottom of our screens. We can just about make at the moment. We'll update you on the score because it's the 34 to 32 lead for FaZe Clan. It's going to be a bit of radio commentary for now for you, but we'll do our best to keep you up to date with what we can see, and hopefully you can enjoy as well. There we go. We're back into the game. Thank big, goodness. That was going to be awkward. Big shout to the team in the back for finding a feed, finding a way back into the gameplay here. 35 to 32. FaZe making the push. And FaZe with that three core advantage, make it four. And now all of a sudden, Optic. Find themselves three dead. Last alive is going to be Trippy. He's trying to survive. Frosty taking some damage, but FaZe now with the most commanding lead we've seen. We were tied up at 30. FaZe have taken over in the late game. They have. And what a time to do it now. Optic, you can see they're going to slow the game down again. No surprise there. Need to dig deep. Now, let's not forget Optic Gaming and late game Slayers. We have seen historically them able to slow games down in an unbelievable fashion. However, they'll find themselves falling one and two dead here. Player is just really struggling on the map at the moment. It's trippy. Usually Aquarius Slayer is the game type, which I would say usually is the standout. 5 and 12 in this game, but with a few kills going their way, Optic keep themselves in it. That last few moments, Andy, was so important. I think not just to the context of this game, but maybe to the context of where the Halo World Championship goes. It really was to bring this game back now with M3 after being down by six. Quite a statement, and it's just another chapter in the Optic Gaming book when you have a player and a coach like Lunchbox behind you. You find a way. APG finds a way. He gets the stick onto Snakebite, survives. Trippy gets taken down by Grenades, though, and now the flank coming in from Lucid, but is he going to have the timing? It looks like FaZe might have escaped, but APG doing some huge work himself at the moment. He's 11 and 8 in this game. He is trying to drag Optic into this game. Ooh, Lucid, even while screen watching, does such a nice job there to check low gen. Almost gets the kill. However, Unable to do so, so they will stay in a two-kill deficit. However, 
One heat wave shot left for Lucid on the pink push. Frosty stat line at the moment, by the way, is 10, 11, and 10. Zero on the KD, but contributing to 11 assists as well for his team, shooting everything that moves. Lucid just getting a little bit of opening damage. More important, though, is the info on that moment. They know the entire team is trapped. They're checking every bit of gen here. Let's take ourselves back. The last time that Optic were forced to make a push, they did not come out the better side of it. But this time, they've got the heat wave for Frosty. Look how annoying he's being. But not annoying enough. It's a tie game here. Formal with double. Formal still alive as well. QT's away. Here comes Trippy. Optic into a lead. 50 seconds left. 43 to 42 here. Optic only up by one. The Let's Go Optic chance starts in the room as well. The next push will determine the game. Optic fans start to believe once more. Maybe Optic themselves will that main stage start to believe once more. We've still got time left. Lucid gets one though. Trade it out immediately. It's a one kill game. They're going to flood there. It's a perfect flood into the fridge to make sure that kill is traded out here. 44, 43. Lucid in the 1v1. Oh, we got Windy in there. The pressure may be felt by Lucid as Renegade comes out with a kill. 15 seconds remaining. Oh, and Renegade cuts down Formal. One kill, the advantage here for FaZe. Gets a free kill, he knows he needs to clear out the base here. They're up by one, seven seconds left on the clock. Here's the push. Royal 2 gets one. Three seconds left, Formal. Ties the game up once more, it's absolute carnage in the base. Optic make the push. Optic make the push. APG's controller was down. We're into overtime. We went into overtime, it was tied up as the game finished. 48 to 47, it was tied 47, 47 there. Now into OT. Have you I've ever seen anything like this? And it's just how it goes with these two teams. 238, but you won't need that much time on the clock here. Optic Gaming needs two, FaZe needs three. We've just learned there's new margins. We thought it couldn't be closer, we've just learned it could be. Overtime in a Slayer. Trippy with some shot grenades. Optic want to make the play, they want to be aggressive, but Trippy's got to be careful. Look at Frosty. He's ready to jump up onto this. They have to make the play. Half shield is trippy. No shield is trippy, but can he survive here? Here goes Formal. Formal's got the heat wave. FaZe have to retreat. And even though FaZe are down by one, they cannot afford to give away a few kills. Stay by. He'll go down. It's one more for Optic to tie up the second series we find ourselves in. 49, 49! Oh my god, Royal 2 gets the kill! It's one kill! It's one kill! Lucid kind of trapped on the bottom of pink here. FaZe do not know where he is though. It's a complete standoff. This might be the closest Slayer game you'll ever see. Lucid 16 and 12. Guess what? Optics right back in it. And Lucid, unsurprisingly, is your standout Slayer player. We've seen it time and time again. FaZe unable to keep him down. And now he's positive four game in his hands here. 60 seconds or so left. It's a few long range grenades coming in as well from Formal. Checking those corners. Who's the bravest player on this main stage? Getting a bit of info here. Here comes a little bit of push from FaZe. I've never seen anything like this. OT has been extended all the APG's way. Here comes the, the push. APG's got the info. Who's going to win this fight? Stay fight! The captain! The general! You were the team who were 2 0 up, and FaZe turned it around. Well, FaZe are 2 0 up now. Optic are going to need all of your energy here in the crowd to make them believe there's a chance to get back into this. Renegade our POV, and why wouldn't it be? A monster previous performance. And the green wall is getting loud. Let's also not forget, even just take yourself back to yesterday as well, right? Optic Gaming down 2 to 0 against FaZe Clan in the winner's bracket final, and they reverse sweep three in a row. As you said, far from over this grand final. Even though we've seen FaZe pick up the first two, there's a lot more Halo yet to be played here at the World Championship. They pick up the first two, but the Uphall's just been picked up by Optic. Trippy's got himself an overshield as well, but all of FaZe are challenging him. And the overshield will be extinguished. Formal has the snipe. 
but at least Optic have started this game with a little bit of promise. 18 points on the board for them, but finally, fatal break. This will come as no surprise based off of what you've seen in this grand final so far, but the two teams' records pretty close in this game type as well. Optic Gaming is 6-1 and one in Oddball Live Fire. However, this season, FaZe Clan is 8-0, undefeated in the game the type. Trey comes in from Frosty. Ball dropped. Enemy has As the Optic ball. make their push back tower, the only problem is a couple of players have already fallen. APG down, Lucid down as well. And this means that FaZe Clan might be able to turn this game back in their favor. They will go into a lead, but it will only be the most slender. Oh, they somehow just poked through and got a kill onto Royal 2, and all of a sudden, it's going to be a forced play ball as we repulsed off the map just to make sure that Optic don't get to have hold of it. I like that play from Snakebite because rather than having to actually play the ball really close to the end or maybe even having to play yourself off, you could repulse that ball eventually. More repulse battles happen at top tower and it's a little bit awkward. It's a 2v1 momentarily for Frosty and Royal 2. Up against Formal. Snakebite though with a very good spawn here on Overshield side. That's where the attention will now turn. Repulse again winning the battle here. Speaking of winning battles, it's going to be the Overshield battle that's being won. And the man who won the last game for FaZe Clan with that final kill. He gets a double kill and it's Optic Gaming who are four dead. And FaZe establish their lead. Already quite a lead, 41 to 18 now. And they know the nest pressure is coming in. They get the opening damage again. This is what we've talked about. FaZe Clan has been the best at shutting down Optic Gaming's original pushes here. They get the opening damage. It's three dead again for Optic. FaZe answers back. Trippy's the last player alive back. Tower, he gets taken down. It's another clean wipe for FaZe. Optic cannot get a push together at the moment. With how well that I mean, look at these shots coming in from Snakebite, by the way. Gets D scoped, immediately snaps back onto APG. Sometimes there's not much you can do when someone is shooting this well, and Snakebite has risen to another level. FaZe is showing no signs of slowing. The scoreboard is not only 70 to 18, but right now they're outslaying 22 to 13. Renegade with a triple kill. Oh boy. Doesn't get the overkill. But he might have just done enough damage here to keep Optic at bay from that old ball. And that's what this game type is all about. Three minutes, 20 seconds left in this round, but FaZe only need 30 points of that. Oh my. Snake bite here. From a nice rat tunnel choke. It's a perfect pinch here. Peter on rat tunnel. Snake bite though getting pushed from A. He has to try to rotate the ball and stay alive. Whereas it's towards teammates, says, hey, let's double back and kill this player. I've already dealt with two players. But there's Foreman with that snipe. But here's Snake bite again. And this man is not missing. 74 on the board, and honestly, it just feels like an extension of the previous games that we've seen for FaZe Clan. Especially when you think about that game number one, how dominant they were in their slaying within an objective game type. They're doing it again here in game number three. Oddball still in the hands of FaZe. The time is ticking up. And all of Snakebite was having that battle with two players inside of A. FaZe had that ball over a tower. And even with APG cutting them down with that sniper rifle, it's going to have to be near perfect from Opti to get back into this round. Trippy does have that overshield. APG will be taken down. Renegade continues his reign of terror. Four points to go. Forces Lucid out of that shroud. And then comes back for a kiss. Three dead for Optic Gaming as well. This will be a grab here, and that'll be it. Round number one goes to FaZe Clan. One nil. And Frosty has a smile on his face. And Ooh. let me tell you, even a little bit of a Royal 2 smile there. I think that smile is sneaking out there for Frosty as he's feeling good. Not only do they put that you round on the board, it. but as we said, six consecutive games across your grand final straight. Even though they found two receiving losses early on, they have not looked back and they are continuing to look just as strong here. Continuing to outslay, 35 to 21. Who's it gonna challenge? Oh, oh no. That's how the series is going right now if you're an Optic fan. Renegade gives you two warning shots and then removes your skull. It really is that simple. There's another shot onto Lucid. Lucid can't get near him. And now, as if it wasn't horrible enough to go up against him, he's got himself an overshield and formal. Might be finding out that sniper rifle hurts as well. Well, they call him the demon. Oh and this is going to be a seriously. nightmare for Optic Gaming. Renegade's tough enough to take down like this. Don't give him the overshield as well. He's going to do it through the shroud. The only thing that stops him is the ammo. The clip is running out. And while this carnage is going down, they still have the oddball, as of course Renegade wins yet another battle. We are witnessing 
amazing scenes from the side of Face Clan. They're already up 30 to zero in this game as well. Let's get to a listen to with Face Clan. And Blue Seed, Red, Blue Seed got me. Red's on, Red's on Keter, I think. Red, no, Matt Keter. Nice. Right, one more Matt. One more Matt. No, no way. No, no, no. Blue Seed, Blue Seed, Blue Seed. He's Keter on Matt. What's up, what's up, Blue Seed? They're gonna spawn B. They're gonna spawn B. I hear you, Matt. I hear you, Matt. He's training, guys. Training. I can get ball. I can get ball. Training one. Training one. Training one. Ness is dead. Nice. Any ballers? I got ball. I got ball. What's up, Gabe? What's up, Gabe? What's up, Gabe? Yo, two is major. What a tunnel. He's going tunnel with T-Wave. Repulse, repulse around you. Right, close to you, close to you. Nice. Holy nice. fuck. Yo, he Watch was down there. He was down there. OB in 20. OB in 20. Go on, dead with ball, guys. I saw him. I saw him. PJ's pretty good. Dummies, open field and top. Top mid and dead. I'll shoot dummies. I'll shoot dummies. Top mid is lost. Top mid is lost. Two double. 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 Two Cuts, 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 cuts,
He's holding it over a nest. APG trying to force his way forward. He will go down. Renegade finds himself a sniper rifle, and I'm pretty sure the ball might be a, might have been moved towards back green here. Four more falls. Optic fall. All of them in the death screen. As Royal 2 shakes his head at Optic. And puts phase within one game of calling themselves world champions. What a performance from FaZe. It's recharged, king of the hill. FaZe Clan lead three to zero. FaZe Clan on the brink of greatness, on the brink of history. As we head into recharge, king of the hill. The tension has been built, the drama has been there. Question is, do Opting have something to say about it still? They're going to need to dig deep and dig deeper than they maybe ever have here. As we said, it would be the most difficult world championship. I don't even think Optic Gaming knew that it could play out this way. Certainly not after they were up 2-0. to zero. This wouldn't have been the situation they would have thought they found themselves in. On the other side, it's FaZe Clan who probably, knowing that they were coming from the elimination bracket since yesterday, always saw themselves in this exact scenario. Maybe didn't think that they'd win seven games straight, but they've it's done fair. But they've done it. You would probably ask FaZe, yeah, they'd probably go, yeah, we've probably been done though. That one now. It's actually taking a little bit longer than we thought. It's true. A few fist pounds being exchanged on both sides of the stage as the players get ready to load in. And how does Optic Gaming slow down the phase momentum. Will it come in the form of King of the Hill recharge? That's the, that's the comfort, right? That, that's yeah. the crazy thing. You, you summed it up perfectly. This is the game type that gave Optic a life. And at the moment, there barely are any signs of it. But one hill. And all of a sudden, Optic probably realized, hey, we can beat this team. We can beat FaZe. So those little things that just trigger that brain that works in funny ways sometimes to give you that belief. Phase and Optic will continue. The epic that we've been watching so far. And it has already been a historic grand final. And we get at least one more. Phase one game away from a world championship. Opting to maybe do it here. Optic Gaming though. We'll need to win four straight. Three dead for Optic off the opening. Snakebite looking around because there's no one to kill. Looking at his teammates' screens and sat inside of that hill with the camo. And I'm pretty sure the Optic still aren't aware of his actual position Enemy inside of this hill. Score. And you have to wonder if that King of the Hill of Siren is the death knell. Maybe the beginning of the end for Optic Gaming. What a start it was from FaZe. YPG gets a really important kill on phase two break. They took their time, Andy. Boy, did they take their time to break then. But break they did. APG with a little poke, but no connection with that shock rifle. The crowd trying to get behind him. As phase will be three dead. There's life in Optic here. Royal 2 was your last player alive. He stays top tower. He stays alive long enough for the help to come on the way. And just like that, they flip it. It's two dead for Optic. Lucid finds the kill onto Royal 2. You wonder if FaZe are going to try and stack this hill. Just try and get that last bit of time. Well, APG is going to make sure that isn't going to be the case. FaZe are three dead. Lucid picks up yet another. Three dead again. Trippy takes down Royal 2. Renegade spawns Whirlpool, which is big. Frosty was your last player alive. Renegade, though, with big damage off a of mid bridge, and that could be the point. That's going to be the point, maybe. No! He goes down, Optic jump into it. Three dead. Trippy lost the life. Snake by will fall. Trippy stood inside of that hill. It's 1v1. a 1v1. Frosty versus oh. Trippy. Frosty will win it. Frosty doesn't drop, though. He doesn't go for the hill just yet. He knows that spawners have come in the form of APG. He does not go for the hill just yet. All, oh they, need to do, all they need to do is step in with just one toe, and they will secure that first hill. But Optic not too far away themselves. Showing their experience, though, knowing they can't get desperate for it. Now is the time to step in. They put the pinky toe in. They put the hammer down. Optic Gaming, three dead. Phase up by one. They win that first hill. Just in case you needed a reminder of how closely these two teams are matched, how about that first hill? In the end, though, the story continues in favor of FaZe. They have their first of four hills on the board. Four minutes left on the clock. 
There's Renegade, baby. Another headshot picked up. That camo's gonna allow him to do whatever the heck he wants, and the thing he wants to do by the looks of things is find Optic Heads. APG with a double kill, though, and then you see Trippy come in. Shock has been turned over. This was the flawless hill, remember, for Optic Gaming the last time these two teams met. They need something like that now. It's a great point you make. Phase already looking very different than they did yesterday in this game type against Optic Gaming. As we said, Optic was able to 4-0. That won't be the case this time. We'll see if Optic can answer back on this second hill. So far, they lead by just a hair. Formal repositioning, watching bottom mid. FaZe have backed up here just to re-establish themselves on the map and formulate their push. Optic take the chance to just step into that hill for a second. Oh boy, that's the opener they needed. Maybe Formal's gonna be that guy once more. Enemy One kill apiece. The hill. FaZe though, they've collapsed from the long haul side, and now Formal, under pressure to hit more shots, he's got three face players in front of him. Now keep in mind, the longer this drags out, the more dangerous and the more high stakes these hills become. Trippy on Camel, not burned based on the timing, it should still be up. Enemy team. Should be a trade here coming in from Formal, 2v2 on the map at the moment, Snake by dropping down to the double stacks, Lucy gets that Camo, can he finish off the kill though? Yes he can! but it's a burn on the camo. It's a 1v1, but Royal 2 is the player next to the hill, and because of that, FaZe get those spawns at blue. Look at this play from Royal 2. Steps in for just a second, but more importantly, grabs the shock and rotates back Hydro. Knows that it's more important to play the position here, but like we said, this is very low scoring. Still just one to zero with less than three minutes left. The more that the time ticks, the higher stakes this specific hill becomes. Look at Formal, just shoulder peeking again. Doesn't want to give an easy shot here to Royal 2. Frosty though comes in and cleans up the damage. Phase ahead ever so slightly on this hill. But it really is just a matter of millimeters between the two. Not an exaggeration to say that this hill could decide the Enemy tournament here. Took the hill. As we say, very low scoring for this game type. Will we see Phase go up Enemy two to zero? Will Optic tie it? Two dead for Optic. Now's their chance to push in. Renegade's collapsing. Renegade gets the final two and Phase break. Phase now hold and will go into a lead on this second hill. Take a look at World 2's route here. He knows he needs to clean up that kill bottom middle. Fantastic communication coming in from FaZe. Oh! Send it back to Trippy. The repulse. Might have just shoved the hopes of Optic down as well. Optic now trying to break, but you can see how close FaZe are to going up two to zero. Lucid, caught off guard, Renegade. Picks up another kill. Now he's gonna clean up APG. Another kill bottom middle. Formal. Stops him in his tracks. Trippy though, last player alive. It's 2v1 and the second point goes in for FaZe. Off a fantastic play from Renegade. Look at Renegade on bat ledge. Optic Gaming had no idea he was on bat ledge. He's able to drop down on Lucid. Do more damage on Formal. Help with the last battle bottom middle to get three dead. And now FaZe clan up two to zero with 150 left. Lucid's got the shot. Royal 2 though, he's got all the confidence in the world right now. Three players stacked up. Inside of the hill for Optic. Trippy trying to escape and Trippy doing so. Trippy needs to find some kills. He's been a bit quiet ever since Optic went down in this series. Two dead. Momentarily on the side of phase, but now they're back on the map. Optic holding this elevator hill Enemy strong. About to score. It feels like FaZe has had a slaying advantage since game three of the first series, and they have not looked back. Once again, they're out slaying 43 to 34. 149 left. Royal 2 goes in, doesn't get that kill. Saint Boy gets one. There's the help as well from Frosty, it's three dead. And even with Optic so close to capping that hell, Andy, FaZe just won't give them anything. Look at the stop there, unbelievable. Once again, Optic just needed one extra, not even a second, a fraction of a second to put that first hill on the boarded elevator. FaZe gets the break. Optic, though, does have time for a break here. Can they make it happen? One dead per side. Renegade taking damage. Snake bite and Royal 2. Holding strong, though. This could be the tournament right here for Optic. And the same can be said for FaZe. Snake bite gets the first kill. Formal and APG, though. They get two. Renegade and Snake bite down. Lucid will fall. Royal 2 trying to shut the door on the hopes. Trippy flies in, Royal 2! 
with what might be a championship winning triple kill in the elevator. What a stop there from FaZe. The timing was just off for Optic Gaming. They tried to make it happen. Formal comes through the A door late. Trippy knew that when he was flying into Whirlpool, it probably was not going to happen. Royal 2 takes advantage of it. An extra triple kill on the board for him as well. 3 to 0. FaZe Clan is one hill away from being your Halo World Champion. That's a moment you'll remember for quite some time. Royal 2 with the perfect shots to shut down Optic Gaming. Snake by now with that repulse. And Royal 2 is looking for more. He's got one. Trippy falls as well. He's got the camo. And he says, hey, someone else get the hill. Optic of four dead, and I want to add to my stats. And once again, it's good time on the board in this hill specifically oh for Optic my. Gaming, but the break is too easy for FaZe. Oh no. World 2 almost makes it happen in the same exact place where it once happened before. Still a man advantage, two man advantage for the side of FaZe. They get the stop, but notice they are not tracking on the hill. They have not been holding this hill. They want to burn the game clock. There's 60 seconds left, and they are up three to zero. Formula and HPG trying to push. Renegade flying straight in. Royal 2 with some nades. He'll get a trade. Trades are perfect. Trippy last alive. Trippy's gonna fall as well in just a few moments, you would imagine. Lucian trying to keep his teammate as alive. He's long-term duo. And Optic are inside this hill. And Optic are giving it everything. They are not letting this one slip away, but it might just be too much at this point. Here comes the tower push as well as... Nice team shot there, two dead for Optic though. This might be it, it might be another clean wipe here on the end, 40 seconds left. Formal and APG trying to push out the tower, but at the moment, look at Royal 2. He is playing with such confidence. And I think he knows, even with Optic getting that one hill on the board, that as the seconds tick by, he might call himself Royal 3 Rings. There was two dead here for FaZe. As you said, there's just not time on Optic Gaming's side. Trippy is the last player alive. And despite the fact that he's in the hill, his spawners will not be. Trippy should be neutralized here. Should be. Taken down now. 20 seconds left. Oh, no. Two now with camo. Just playing with his food at this point. It's two dead for Optic again. Four more taken down. Last player alive, APG. He will fall as well. And for the first time this season, the bracket gets reset. And FaZe Clan will be your Halo World Champions. A historic run, not just for FaZe, but for the entire Halo franchise from the elimination bracket, they went back to back best of sevens against your defending world champions to become your 2023 Halo world champions. A team put together for this one moment to call themselves the Halo world champions. Well, that's exactly what their title is right now. Resetting the bracket, fighting their way through the elimination bracket. And Renegade, who made the switch, now can feel justified as FaZe will lift your trophy. And what a way to do it. To 4 0 the way that they did in your second best of seven. This was not just a win, but this was a statement. They claim the Halo World Championship away from Optic Gaming and in front of a packed house in Seattle, make history. And every single player who's on that team you can see in front of you right now had a special moment in the series. Whether it was Snakebite with the 50-49, that final kill. Royal 2 running rampant in that final game. Renegade with that sniper rifle or Frosty with the takeover that we saw on Solitude. No man was left not doing a job and part of the history they just created. And when you talk about ice, 
I don't think there will be a better example to point to for a very long time than the ice in the veins of these five members of FaZe Clan. A devastating victory. Winning eight straight games to close out your grand finals. Well, for Bravo and myself, as always, it is an absolute privilege to be a part of these moments. But the moment doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the four gentlemen on that stage right now. Blaze, take it away, my friend. Faze, you're world champions. Thank you so much, Onset and Bra, for the amazing cast. Seattle and everyone around the world, give it up for your world champions, FaZe Clan! Man, Frosty, I talked to you this morning. You told me on the stage, you said, the job is not done yet. You had a ways to go. Talk to me about what this series means for you to become a world champion for the third time here in the fashion in which you did it. Uh, I mean, it just it meant everything. Uh, winning this with this team felt so good. We put in the work. We put in the work. Uh, this guy's the best in the game. We're all insane. We put in so much work to win yep. this, and uh, we deserve this. No, you guys definitely do deserve it, okay? Pass the mic on over to the demon himself, Renegade! Man, and talk about how this event, you know, comes full circle. We saw the unlocked piece on you, okay? Talked about your Halo career, and you come up here, you get another world championship. You look so cool, calm and collected on that main stage. How did you feel getting this one? Dude, I am lost for words right now. I think that was the craziest tournament I've ever played in my life. And uh, I'm happy I did it with these guys. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. The gameplay was insane up there. Definitely one of uh, some of the best matches that we've seen here in maps, OK? Now, let's pass this mic on over. Let's get a little trophy shuffle happening over there. Royal 2, OK? Might call him Royal 3 now. We saw the triple kill you got to get that third point, to get your third victory of the season, and get your third world championship. How do you feel? I, I'm actually a loss for words too. I mean, I just shout out to my teammates. They're amazing. We worked so hard from Charlotte to now. I mean, we just did a loser's bracket reset for the first time, and I'm just super proud of them, and I can't be more happy to do it with them. Yeah, give it up for FaZe Clan, everybody, right? Now, let's get the mic on over towards the captain, all right? Snake bite. Give it up for Snake Bite. Yeah. PJ, the slayer that we watched you get that last kill in was absolutely insane to put you guys in a great position. Talk to me about the games. How was it for you playing it and also winning this championship? Yeah, just feeling great. Uh, the games that we won, we just really bought into our game plan. Uh, I'm so proud of these guys, man. We, we put in so much prep. Um, yeah, I, I can't say any more than that. I'm so happy. I appreciate these guys' hard work. and. Uh, we did it. Let's you go. did it again, okay? I do want to talk to Coach over here, Royal One. Give it up for the Coach of FaZe Clan, everybody. Royal One. Now, Coach, you've been through so much with these boys throughout the, this entire season here. Talk to me about what they've been through and what this win means for the whole team. Uh, it, this win means everything. Like, uh, I cannot believe. Like, no one has worked harder than us this whole year. A lot of people doubted us after those last two losses that we had. All we did was just put our heads down and work. We worked harder than everyone. We did exactly what we needed to do going to this tournament. We did the unthinkable with this loser's run, and I, I, I'm lost for words, bro. These, these guys are the best in the game. They are the best in the game, and you're a world champion once again. Now, lastly, pass the mic back over to PJ. PJ, any last words you want to say to these FaZe Clans fans that's been supporting and cheering for you this entire season, entire event? Yeah, thank you to all our fans uh, all year round. Uh, thank you so much for all the support. My family's here, friends are here, uh, my beautiful wife up there. Thank you so much for all the support. I could not do this. We could not do this without you guys. We love you. We love the Hale community. Thank you. Hand me that mic and bask in the glory one more time as your world champions are FaZe Clan!